All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Nkantalak, the toy soldier. Nkantalak, the toy soldier. Okay. Um, let's get the definition of what is a toy soldier before we proceed so we understand what the Most High God is trying to show us. All right. Okay. Let's read the definition right there. The first definition of a toy soldier. Come on. The definition of toy soldier, according mm -hmm. to vocabulary.com. Come on. Toy soldier. Now, a doll that resembles a soldier. A doll that resembles a soldier. So a toy soldier is a doll. That's the first point. A toy soldier is a doll that represents a soldier. So this is not a real soldier. It's just a toy. You understand? It's non-functioning. Okay, let's read the next, the next part right there. It says doll, dolly. Go ahead. Doll, dolly. A small replica of a person used as a toy. A small replica of a person used as a toy. So that means what? This person that has been replicated, this toy that has been replicated into a person, you understand, has no direction, has no control, cannot breathe, you understand, is controlled and dictated by outside factors, meaning what? They move on emotions of the person that's using it. Okay, that's why it's called, it says, used as a toy, meaning a puppet. Okay, let's get the next definition. Uh, read that. This is dictionary.cambridge.org. I want you to read this highlighted part right here. Reading from dictionarycambridge.org. Mm -hmm. Toy soldier. Toy soldier is less obvious, perhaps because a toy soldier is not actually a soldier in the real sense. You see that thing? Is a toy soldier is less obvious. Meaning what? What does that mean, less obvious? Meaning it is 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 put this way it, to make it less obvious that it's actually just a toy. You understand? That's why it says less obvious. Perhaps because he's explaining it now, because the toy soldier is not actually a soldier in the real sense. And that's what you see with this boy, but again, he can collect. He's just a toy. He's a toy soldier. He's a doll soldier. You understand? He's not a real soldier. Okay, watch this. Let's get the next definition. Now read that. Reading from CollinsDictionary.com. Mm -hmm. Toy soldier. Mm -hmm. A miniature, non-functioning replica of a soldier. A especially mm -hmm. a miniature non-functioning replica of a soldier. A miniature, a miniature, non-functioning replica of a soldier. That's what we read in the first definition. It says, a small replica of a person used as a toy. So this is not an actual soldier. It's a toy soldier that people play with. And which people are these? Children. Children play with toy soldiers. You understand? Because children are miserable. You understand? And the misery for the misery to be taken away, children need toys. You understand? And when they are done with the toy, they need a young, they need another one. Understand that? Okay, let's go back. Read that definition again. Toy soldier. Mm -hmm. A miniature, non-functioning replica of a soldier. Come on. Especially one that children play with. Especially one that children what? Especially one that children play with especially one that children play with. So a toy soldier is completely 100% dictated by the emotions and misery of children. You understand? Because the child will do whatever they want with the toy because their emotions tell them to do that thing that they are doing at that point. Once they're done with it, they just throw the toy soldier in the bin. You understand? So what you are seeing with this boy, Varagin Dantalaj, amateur hour, you understand? So he's completely dictated by his emotions are run by what? By our people who God says they are children. I'm going to read that in a minute. In the script. Okay. Now, give me Wisdom of Solomon 15 verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon. You know what? Hmm. Before you get that, let's get the real soldiers in the Bible. Give me that in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Watch this. I'm going to show you the real soldiers in the Not toy soldiers. Like what you see with this boy. No, no, no. The real soldiers, our forefathers that stood up for their own people in righteousness and they taught the people the laws of God. They organized the people with the laws of God, built families, 
She taught men how to be men, to get a job, take care of your family, get married, stop popping babies all over. The sister, dress modestly, keep your legs closed, learn how to be a wife, take care of the children, support your husband when we go to war. That's what the soldiers of the Bible have done. Now watch this. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. Read that for me. 2 okay. Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Read that again. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know what? Start of verse 1. We're going to read down. Watch this. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You see that thing? It says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What is the grace that is in Christ? Give me that in Titus 2, verse 11. It says, we must be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, the black Messiah, our leader, our king, that is coming to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Read that, Titus 2, verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So the grace of God that brings deliverance, deliverance from what? Slavery. The grace of God is what's going to deliver us from captivity, slavery, oppression, apartheid, and all that. Read. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly so lust. The, so grace of Christ is going to teach us, to, teaching us to do what? To deny ungodliness. Politics is ungodly. Toitoying is ungodly. Democracy is ungodly. What this boy is doing with our people, because our people are vulnerable. That's why, as a toy soldier, he's able what? He's able to move our people's emotions because our people is emotional. He also is emotional. You understand? We? Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Worldly lust, come on. We should live soberly. Righteously and godly in this present world. You see that thing? We should live what? Read that part again. We should live soberly. We should live soberly because that's what the most high God commands us. He says we must live soberly. Don't get high. Don't be on drugs. Don't be on weed. Stop smoking cigarettes. You understand? Destroy your own people and your own self. Read. Righteously. Righteously. God, the grace of God is teaching us to, to live a righteous life. What does it mean to live righteously? Hold that. Give me to Psalm 25. Let's see what it means to live righteously. Okay? Read that. What you got? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Go ahead. And it shall be our righteousness mm -hmm. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. That's what it means to live a righteous life. To abide by the laws of God. Not grant on emotion. These young men that you see, these toy soldiers that you see on the street now, carry Operation Pidula, they are on an emotion. Many of them are raised by their mothers. They are just emotional. They are not logical. They are not sensible because they are void of judgment. They don't have the laws of God guiding them. They don't care about their own people. They are only running on emotion. You understand? I'm going to show you that in a minute. Go back to where it was at. Okay? Titus 2 verse 12. Read that again. Titus chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly uh -huh. lust. Worldly lust, read. We should live soberly. We should live soberly. You understand? Because right now, this boy is running on the philosophies that the white man has taught him. Everything he knows is what he saw on TV. You understand? Something he read that the white man wrote. Everything that is in his mind is running on what? Is running on the mind of the colonial master. That's why he's going against his own people, trying to please his master. Guess what? What he's doing is not new. We saw it during the time of the Greeks, when our forefathers joined with the Greeks. You understand? They were hating their own people, terrorizing their own people. We saw it during the time of Rome. Our people joined with the enemy to do what? To destroy their own people in the name of democracy. Now in the name of, no, we are South Africans. You don't even know who you are, calling yourself the direction and the name of a white man. This is crazy. Okay, read that thing again. Titus chapter 2 verse 12. Read. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly uh -huh. lusts. Read. We should live soberly. This is the commandment. We should live soberly. That's why when you see today, because we don't live soberly, we're making the white man money. 
You understand? We don't own Kodi. We don't own that company. We don't own uh, RG. We don't own Stavisand. But guess what? Stavisand was a former slave master who enslaved our people. Guess what? Black men are hooked on, are hooked on Stavisand. They are hooked on Kodi. You don't even know who Kodi is. But you're smoking that thing to destroy yourself and your own people around you. You understand? Because that's the mind of a slave. It's time to return back to this book and do what it says, as it is written in the Holy Bible. Now read that thing again, verse 12. Come on. Titus chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, uh -huh. we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We should live righteously, godly in this present world. 2022, we must be applying the laws of God. Politics has done nothing for us. We're still at the bottom. We're still slaves. We're still selling our enemies for want of all things. You want the car, you want the house, you want education, you want food, you want clothing, you want water, you want shelter. We go to our enemies for all these things. Our people still don't get that. You understand? Because they're neglecting the greatest book on earth. The book that was given to our forefathers, the Holy Bible. The Bible is not the book of the white man. The Bible is the book of our fathers on how we rule the earth. But the black men don't want that. That's why they are already running on emotions or operation to do a toy soldier. You understand? Void of understanding. You don't know what's going on. You don't know how the pieces are sitting together on this earth. The enemies are just laughing and mocking at us because of this behavior. Okay? Now, go back to where was that. 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. Read that thing again for me. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He says we must be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The grace that is in Christ is that he gave us a chance to take over the earth. He said, okay, you messed up. I sent you into slavery. Your enemies have oppressed you. Now it's time for me to wake you up. The Lord, that's what he's doing right now. The great awakening. The most that God is waking us up is waking us up out of sleep. Okay? It says, my grace, the, it says what? It says, we must be strong in that thing. We must be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The witnesses that are in the Bible, our forefathers that came before. Right? The same commit thou to faithful men. You see that thing? So the things that are written in this book must be committed to faithful men. Not men that run on emotion, but men that keep God's commandments and they lead by example and they go out there to teach the people the laws of God to bring the 12 tribes of Israel back together to rule the earth. Read. Who shall be able to teach others also? Who shall be able to teach others also? Not go out there to terrorize your own people, your own brother from Nigeria, your own brother from Ghana, your own brother from Mozambique. The same people that this boy this toy soldier is terrorizing is the same people that experience colonization, oppression, you understand, slavery by the same white men who they are afraid to confront. You notice this operation to do that? They don't ap approach the white men who they're illegal. He took this country by violence. He killed the killing of our mothers, our fathers, our grandfathers. They took our land. They took our, our, our resources, our cattle, our goats, our sheep. Everything from us, they don't want to confront that alien. They're confronting your brother who suffered, who suffered the same oppression from the same man that you are afraid to talk to. I'm going to show you that. Because what you are seeing is an act of what? It's an act of fear. Don't be fooled by all this, all this gathering together of an unruly multitude. Don't be fooled by that. It's all based on fear. If it was real, they'll go and confront the white man living in Fenton, living in Pretoria, living in Jovek, that, is, that are sitting on stolen land. 87% of the land is owned by them. And they are the 5% of this country. And they own 87% of the land, while we occupy 13% of the land. But they don't want to confront him. You understand? You see the coward behind that? That's what toy soldiers do. You understand? Toy soldiers are, are miniature replicas of the soldier that children play with. That's what you just saw in the definition, okay? 
I'm going to show you the real soldiers of this Bible. Our forefathers that delivered our people from oppression. Moses, Joshua, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, you understand? Christ. Those are the real soldiers of the most like God that are going to take over this earth. And those people are back. Except the Lord is not back yet. Okay, read. Come on. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No, as a toy soldier. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He says, thou therefore endure hardness. Meaning it's going to be hard to raise our people. It's going to be hard to wake our people up. It's going to be hard because this is not a physical thing right now. It's a spiritual thing. Our people mentally and spiritually, they are destroyed. You understand? They are destroyed. Our people are in a mental prison. And to, to, the only way to deliver our people from mental slavery is using the Holy Bible. We must reset the mind of the Negro. Understand that with the Holy Bible. Read that thing again. Verse 3. Come on. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He says we must endure hardness because it's going to get hard. It's already hard, but it's going to get harder than this. He it says, it says we must endure hardness as a good soldier. A good soldier. What makes this soldier to be good? Hold that. Give me Romans 7 verse 12. This is what makes the soldiers of Christ to be good. Not toy soldiers that are running emotions because they are raised by their mothers. No, no, no. The most I cannot use you. You understand? Those are the enemies of their own people. That's what you are seeing they are doing in the community. Terrorizing our mothers from, from uh, Lesotho. You understand? Terrorizing our, ma our mothers from Botswana. What the hell is this? Okay? Now read that for me. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Read. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and Rain. just and good. You see, what, you see what is good? The law and the commandments of the most High God, they are good and they are just. That's what a soldier does. A good soldier is one that is dictated by God's law, not by emotion, not by the media. You understand? No, 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 none of that. Go back to where he was at. The, the good soldier of Jesus Christ is not dictated by hate. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The, you see what the Bible is saying? It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. What makes this soldier to be good is the laws of God. This soldier does not move on emotion. This soldier is not moved by hatred, which is what you are seeing in the media now. They are not moved by hatred of their own people to please master. Because guess what? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I know I'm jumping ahead. Let's say all these so-called foreigners, because these are not foreigners. A black man, a black, uh, our brothers from Mozambique, that's not a foreigner on the continent. You crazy. You understand? So guess what? Let's say these are our brothers and our, because they are our brothers. They go back to Mozambique, to Ghana, to the Congo, to, you understand? So is this boy going to feed all these people? Is he going to feed them? Is he going to build them the houses? Is he going to give them jobs? Is he going to take care of their house, their children? He's not going to do that. Guess where he's going? He's going to the white man to beg for that job. He's not going to feed them. No vision whatsoever. Because if our brothers go back as they want them to, is this boy, this toy soldier, is he going to feed the people? Hmm? Is he going to build them out? Is he going to shelter them? Is he going to give them jobs? Where is he going to go? Where is he going to go to cater for jobs for all of them? Where is he going to go? He's going to go to the white man to beg for the job. So why is he doing this thing? He's doing this. He said, listen, if, if in order for you to employ the people of the so-called South Africans, if I get rid of these people, are you going to employ them? You see that thing? That's the mindset. You're willing to destroy your own brother from the Congo to please master so that when they're gone, you can go back and crawl to your slave master to beg for a job because he is not going to feed them. I want you men to see this thing what's going on here. Amateur hour, toy soldier. You understand? Because they're already crying to the government that the government is not doing anything. Already they're letting you know there's no vision. 
You understand? He's not going to take care of all these people. He's not going to do it. He doesn't have the means to. You understand? Now, keep reading. 2 Timothy 2 verse 4. Come on. 2 Book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. Read. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You see that thing? It says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Because we are at war, brother. We are at war, sisters. I need you men, especially you men, to understand this. We are at war. And we are at war. We are fighting for the minds of our people with the word of God to return them back to this book. So our people can see themselves in this book because this book is the book of their father. This book is their photo album to see why we as a people, we're struggling like this. Why as a people, we are so destroyed as a nation. We are at the bottom of all nations. Why are we so impoverished? Why do we hate each other? Why do we live like this? Why do we raise our children like this? We don't know how to raise our children. We don't know how to be husbands or wives. We don't know how to be mothers and fathers. What's the problem? The problem is that the most High God gave us the greatest knowledge on earth. We rejected it. We started to worship idols. Now we are at the bottom. We are confused. We are lost. That's why you see these three soldiers rising up. Okay? Read the verse again. Verse 4. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We, our job is to please the Lord who called us into this truth, to be soldiers. You understand? So don't get entangled with politics. Don't get entangled with Mediterranean democracy, the Greek religion, because democracy is the religion of the Greeks. It was born in Athens. And the black man is using politics to overthrow the same man that he's learning his democracy from. That's not going to work. That's a fairy tale. You understand? That's not a threat. The biggest threat is what? Is to teach our people who they are that we're not Ducky. We're not South African. We are the children of Israel whose names have been changed by those that conquered us and colonized us They changed our name, took our book, our land, everything from us. That's why now we are lost. But the Lord says, I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to wake you up. I'm going to bring to you remembrance who you are. Then once you get hold of this book, you're going to cause havoc on this earth because you're going to raise my people up and bring them to glory. That's what you are seeing right now. You understand? That is what you're seeing. Give me the book of Philemon, okay? Philemon chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. Philemon 1 and 1. Read that. Okay, come on. The book of Philemon, chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, mm -hmm. and Philemon, our dearly beloved, and fellow laborer. You see that thing? It says, the Paul is saying, he says, he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I mean, he does everything that Christ says because we're governed by God's laws. He says, unto Philemon, our brother, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Watch this. Go ahead. And to our beloved, Aphia, and Archippus, our fellow soldier. Our what? Our fellow soldier. And Archippus, our fellow soldier. And Archippus, our fellow soldier. So what, what is the war that we're in? This is a spiritual war, brothers and sisters. We don't bring guns, we don't bring knives, we don't bring, we bring the Bible, the greatest weapon on earth, the Holy Bible. Because Christianity has been playing with this book, teaching us white Jesus, a white gay man with blue eyes, pink skin and yellow hair. That's not the Jesus of the Bible, okay? The Jesus of the Bible is coming back to deliver his people from slavery, oppression, colonization, forced migration, and hatred from these other nations that despise us. Read again verse 2. Come on. The book of Philemon, chapter 2. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier. Our what? And Archippus, our fellow soldier. And Archippus, our fellow soldier. Come on. And to the church in thy house. And to the church in thine house. Give me that in Philippians 2 25. Philippians chapter 2, verse 25. Watch this. Read that for me. The book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 25. Go ahead. Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor mm -hmm. and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he and, what? and fellow soldier. Read, the, read verse 25 once again. Come on. 
The book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 25. Come on. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, mm -hmm. and companion in labor, and fellow soldier. He is my companion in labor and fellow soldier. Fellow soldier. Because we are soldiers of Christ. We are, the, we are fellow soldiers in the truth to war. And a soldier has one mission on his mind. That mission, you'll find it in the Holy Bible. To raise up the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad and oppressed. Okay, go ahead. But your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. And he that ministers to my wants, because what was he ministering? He was teaching the people the laws of God. He was helping Paul in his ministry to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. When Paul was doing his travels to do the work, you understand? So these things that you are seeing here, this toy soldier, he's a toy soldier. You don't know what the hell he's doing. He has no plan or vision because, like I say, when these the, our brothers and sisters go back to Botswana, Lesotho, Mozambique, Ghana, Guinea, Nigeria, Cape Verde, and so on and so forth, Namibia, when they go back, is he going to give all these people jobs? They are not himself. Is he going to give all these people houses and take their children to private schools and all that? He's not going to do that. He's not going to do it. Guess where he's going to go? He's going to go to his father, the devil, the white man. That's where he's going. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Isaiah 55 real quick. Okay. Isaiah 55. I'm going to show you our commander in chief. Okay. Our commander in chief. Read that for me. Psalm chapter 55. I mean, Isaiah 55 verse 4. Read that for me. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 4. Read. Right. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, uh -huh. a leader and commander to the people. You see that thing? It says, because it says, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people, because Christ is our king. You understand? He's the one, his spirit is the reason why we are able to gather our people together in this truth to learn the gospel of Christ. You understand? To prepare for the second coming of the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He is our king. We, we're waiting for our king. And while we're waiting for our king, we're supposed to come out of the philosophies of all these nations that they've taught us. You understand? And return back to this book and do what it says. Watch this. Now, but what you are seeing is you, that, that's not a soldier. Intellectualism is not a soldier. Is a toy soldier. A toy soldier is a miniature replica of the real thing, but it's not the real thing. Yeah, now he, he, his existence is he's there for children to play with. And I'm going to show you who the children are. Now, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 13. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 13. For this man, that of earthly matter, maketh brittle vessels and graven images, knoweth himself to offend above all others. Okay, read that verse again. Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 13. Because remember, what we're seeing in the media is, is this toy soldier that is being paraded on the news media. And guess what? And Esau loves it. Because Esau owns the media and he's going to make sure that he broadcasts, he gives time to what? To wicked Negroes who don't know what the hell they are doing. Now, this is what the Bible has to say about it. This praise sold a calling can kind of life. Read that for me. Read again, verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 13. Go ahead. For this man, that of earthly matter, Maketh brittle, brittle vessels and graven images. You see that thing? That is John. You understand? He's making brittle vessels and graven images, meaning vessels that can hold no water. Because the people that are following him, they have no wisdom. They don't know anything. Our people are vulnerable. Yeah, when you understand? They are vulnerable. They are in a, in a, in a desperate situation. 
they're just listening to any Negro that pops up. You understand? But they don't actually stop to think, well, okay, if we are doing this, is this boy going to give us job? And if so, where is he going to go? You understand? You know? Knoweth himself to offend above all others. He knows that his job is to offend above all others. He is offending for the sake of it. You understand? That's what he's doing. Read. And all the enemies of thy people that hold them in subjection are most foolish and are more miserable than very babes. Now read verse 14 again. Watch this. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15 verse 14. Come on. And all the enemies of thy people that hold them in subjection are most foolish. Stop right and more miserable than very babes. It says, and all the enemies of thy people. Who are the enemies of thy people? Watch this. Give me the book of Micah 2 verse 8. And all the enemies of thy people. Because what this movement is doing. Yeah, this is Tory Soldier. Guess what? He's become, he's become an enemy to his own people. His own brothers and sisters that are living on the continent of so-called Africa. You understand? Now watch this. Get that for me in Micah 2 verse 8. The book of Micah, chapter 2 verse 8. Go ahead. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. You see that thing? It says, even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. And that's what we have seen right now. Uh, they, they, this boy is, is basically you know what? going against his own people to please who? Who is he pleasing? The slave master of God. Go ahead. He pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by, securely as men averse from work. Meaning what? You are at war with your own people. You are at war with your own people. What is that called? Hatred. You hate your own people. So much so, already our brothers and sisters, some of them from them, have already lost their lives because of this boy, because of the toy soldier. You understand? He has no accountability whatsoever. I'm going to show you what the Bible calls this type of behavior. Watch this. Now, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 14. Again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 14. Come on. And all the enemies of thy people. And the all the enemies... All the enemies of thy people, because our people has risen up as their own enemy. Guess what? You see, there's a saying that says, black people are their own worst enemy. And that's what you are seeing right now. Go ahead. That hold them in subjection are most the people, And the people that hold them to subjection is who? Is the children, because children need toys to play with. So who's holding this boy in subjection? Guess who's doing that? The people that follow him. You understand? Because children need toys. Go ahead. Are most foolish. Are most what? Are most foolish. They are foolish, the Lord says. They are foolish. Okay, hold that. Give me Jeremiah 4. The most that God says they are foolish. The people that hold the, these boys, these toy soldiers in subjection, the most that God says they are most foolish. They are most foolish. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 4, read verse 22. Listen to what the Most High God says here. Come on. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. For my people is foolish. You see what the Bible is saying? God says his people are foolish. Who's God's people? Give me that in Matthew 2 verse 6. Let's see who God's people are. God says his people is foolish. They are fools. They are dumb. Okay? Read it. Matthew 2 verse 6. The book of Matthew. Chapter 2, verse 6. Go ahead. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. That shall rule my people Israel. So God's people is the Israelites. Who's the Israelites? The so-called black man. The so-called black woman. The Hispanic man and the Native American Indian man. And the people of what? The diaspora. The scattered Israelites. Guess what? We make up the 12 tribes of Israel. We're not Bantus like they call us. We're not Dutchies. We're not Baboons or Kafirs or Negroes or Niggers as they call us. No, we are the sons of the living God. We are the biblical Israelites of the Bible. Understand that? Okay? So let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 4 and 22. 
Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. Great. For my people is foolish. God says, as a people, we are foolish. He says, his children are foolish. What makes them foolish? Because of what you are seeing on the news right now. Go ahead. They have not known me. They don't know the law. They know politics. They think they know politics. They think they understand it. They think they know what to it. They think it's okay to hate your own people and terrorize your own people. Because when you become a terror to your own self, you can't make this up. Read. They are sottish children. They are dumb kids. That's what it means to be sottish. Sottish is a very skill. The Lord is insulting us. He says they are sottish children, meaning dumb. He is dumb, don't know. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. And they have none understanding. They have no understanding. No sense whatsoever. Come on. They are wise to do evil. They are wise to do evil. And that's what you are seeing on the news. That's why you see this operation Dutula with this boy called this toy soldier. You understand? Guess what? He's wise to do evil. He's got wisdom to do evil. This is what the Bible, to terrorize his own people, to put terror on his own mothers and fathers, uncles and aunties, selling on the street. You understand? Who suffered the same oppression as our people here in South Africa because South Africa is not our homeland. South Africa is not even our identity. It's not our nationality. South is a direction. Africa is the name of a white man. Leo Scipio Africana. A white man from Rome. Hmm? Go ahead. But to do good, they have no knowledge. But to do good, to wake the people up, to teach the people who they are, to, to, to what? To see what is the solution to fix these broken families. How to fix teenage pregnancy, single, single parent households and abortion. How do we fix that? Hmm? He don't know. He's clueless. You understand? So go back to where he was at now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15. Read verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 14. Come on. And all the enemies of thy people that hold them in subjection are most foolish. You see that thing? So the most that God says, that people, our own people that are enemies to their own, to themselves and to their own people is that they hold toy soldiers to subjection. You understand? Is that, but he says what? Is that they are most foolish, meaning they are wise to do evil. Go ahead. And are more miserable than very babes. He says they are miserable than children. Children are miserable, but the Lord says they take it to a whole new level. You understand? They are more miserable than very babes because children are miserable. That's why children need toys. He's one of those toys. He's a toy soldier. He only moves and is fueled by people's emotions. He doesn't examine things according to what the Bible says. You understand? And he's doing this to please our slave master. Slave master. Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. Read verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon 12 verse 23. Watch this. He's not a good soldier. He's a toy soldier. Watch this. Read it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 23. Come on. Wherefore, whereas men have lived, have lived dis dissolutely and unrighteously. Dissolutely. He says, wherefore, whereas men have lived dissolutely. Come on. And unrighteously. And what? And unrighteously. And unrighteously. They live dissolutely because this boy, this toy soldier, he lives dissolutely and unrighteously. Go ahead. Thou hast tormented them with their own abominations. Thou the most high is tormenting them with their own abominations. You understand? Because what is their own abomination? Thinking that it is okay to kill and set on fire your own brother who suffered the same oppression as your forefathers. You understand? You've never seen Bukitani move like this. You don't see stuff like that. You've never seen Wusti Biko move like this. You don't see that. You've never seen who Oliver Tambo move like this. You don't see dumb stuff like this. You don't see who Kwame Kuruma. You understand? You don't see them move like this. Who Petrus Lumumba. You don't see them do dumb stuff like that. Who is he learning this from? His father, the devil. The so-called white man. Understand that? Read the verse again. Verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 23. Read. 
Wherefore, whereas men have lived dissolutely and unrighteously, mm -hmm. thou hast tormented them with their own abominations. Yeah, the, the most that God is tormenting them with their own abominations because when this dust settles, he is not going to be able to feed the people. I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Let me, let's get the definition of dissolutely. Okay, because that's not a regular Negro way. Okay, read that for me. Dissolute. Read it. The definition of dissolute, reading from vocabulary.com. Vocabulary.com. Come on. Dissolute. The adjective dissolute means unrestrained. You see that thing? The adjective dissolute means unrestrained. So this toy soldier is unrestrained because children, they come and pick it. They pick him up from the from the toy box and they do with him whatever so ever they want. How do they do that? By emotion. You understand? Go ahead. If you're a dissolute person, you engage in the kinds of behaviors that cause disapproval. You see that thing? It says if you are a dissolute person, you engage in the kinds of behaviors that cause disapproval. The killing of your brothers and sisters. Botswana, Lesotho, you understand, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and all that. Those are our brothers and sisters, understand that. Those are the children of Israel. Those are Jews scattered on this continent because of oppression, forced migration, and colonization. You understand? Their lands taken from them. Their cattle taken from them. Their mineral resources stolen from them in broad daylight by the same man that this toy soldier is afraid to confront. You understand? Watch this. Now read that for me. Read that. That highlighted part. But someone who is dissolute not only goes against the grain of normal behavior. It says not only do they go against the grain of normal behavior, but what do they do? Watch this. But is wasteful and offensive. But is wasteful and offensive. Wasting people's time. You understand? Giving people false hope. Read. Over the limit. Over the limit, it just goes beyond. That's a desolate person. And this toy sold and done the life, that's exactly what he is. Now read that adjective. Let's read that thing. Watch this. Come on. Definitions of dissolute adjective. Mm -hmm. Come on. Unrestrained by convention or morality. You see that thing? He is he is not restrained by convention or morality. Morality goes into what? Knowing the difference between right and wrong. You don't know the difference between right and wrong. Good and evil is void of judgment. Now read that. Read that part right there. Deliberately violating accepted principles of right and wrong. Because the laws of God is not there. As the long as the laws of God are not there, that's why a man is full of what? Full of wickedness. He's dumb. He's simple. You don't know what he's doing. You don't know nothing. He doesn't know anything. A toy soldier doesn't know anything. A toy soldier only moves when a child picks it up. You understand? Now, let's get the synonyms of dissolute. Read those synonyms. Come on. Synonyms. Debauched. Debauched. Go ahead. Degenerate. Degenerate. That, these are synonyms of dissolute. Go ahead. Degraded. Degraded. Dissipated. Dissipated, come on. Fast. That means chacharach. Go ahead. Libertine. Libertine goes into what? Liberal. He's liberal. You understand? Because liberal people, they speak liberal things. Villainy. Go ahead. Profligate. Uh-huh. Riotous. Riotous. That cause they, they're just causing rau rau in the community right now. That's what they're doing. Go ahead. Immoral. Immoral. Void of judgment. Meaning what? Righteous judgment. Righteous judgment is not in his mind. He has no sense. A young man void of understanding. Understand that thing. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 12. Wisdom of Solomon 12, verse 23 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, whereas men have lived dissolutely and unrighteously. You see that thing? Wherefore, whereas men have lived dissolutely, meaning what? Deliberately violating accepted principles of right, uh, or right and wrong, unrestrained by convention or morality. That man that lives what? Dissolutely. 
And that's what you see here with the toy soldiers. Read. Thou hast tormented them with their own abominations. That's why now they what they are doing. Listen, that thing is just gonna disappear like it never did. It was never here. There, there was many movements in the past during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, much like this one called Operation To Do. It didn't go nowhere, and I'm gonna show you in the Bible because they don't know history. You understand? Keep going. Verse twenty-four. Read. Verse twenty-four. For they went astray very far in the ways of error. You see that thing? That's a dissolute person. The Bible says, for they went astray very far in the ways of error, in the ways of sin. Where did we, where did we just read that? Let's read that definition again, right there. Read it. But someone who is dissolute not only goes against the grain of normal behavior, uh -huh. but wasteful and offensive. Come on. Over the limit. You see that? But someone who is dissolute not only goes against the grain of normal behavior. That's why he says, read that verse again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 24. Come on. For they went astray very far in the ways of error. You see that thing? They went astray very far in the ways of error. Because why? They are degenerate. Okay, over the limit. Go ahead. And held them for gods. You see that thing? The people that, the people, these children, that, that's why the, the children, they love toys. You take away a toy from a child, guess what? They get upset. You understand? Because that toy has become an idol. Because you see how many times this boy has been going, this toy soldier, he's been going to jail. You see how the people are now acting? Now the people, they think, okay, now he's, they, now they love him more. That's what we're reading here. It says they, what, they did what? And held them for gods. And held them for God. He's their God now. Go ahead. Which even among the beasts of their enemies were, dis were despised. You see that thing? It says, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised. Let me tell you something. You know, finish that up. I'm going to show you what I mean, what this verse means. Go ahead. Being deceived uh -huh. as children of no understanding. You see that thing? It says they are deceived as children of no understanding. They under they, because the people that follow this toy soldier, the God says they are children. You understand? Children that have no understanding because they are led by a toy soldier, a miniature non-functioning replica of a soldier that children play with. Who's the children? They follow us. You understand? So, but it says, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised. Because guess what? That's why I asked the question. Let's say our brothers and sisters from the Congo, Nigeria, Mozambique, let's say they go there. Is this boy going to give them jobs, the so-called South Africans? He's not going to do it. Is he going to be building clinics and all that? He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that thing. Now, guess what? Guess where he's going? He's going to speak to master because that's what they say, no, uh, the so-called foreigners are taking our jobs. So who's offering jobs in this country? It's not the government. It's private, it's private corporations, it's merchants of the earth. You understand? Companies from Britain, China, Europe, Asia, and so on and so forth. And companies from here, mainly which are what? Of European descent. Caucasian descent. Iso Edom. They are the ones that are hiring. So if our brothers and sisters go back to their so-called countries, which is we are on the continent, which the white men divided us up, that's why now we see each other as enemies. Who, who, where are they going to go for jobs? They're going to go to us. So the people that took the land from us by violence, by killing and slaughtering our mothers and raping our children, they're gonna, he's going to go to them to ask for jobs. But the Bible says, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised. You ever seen these nations? They love their animals more than they love us. They Listen, a dog goes to a saloon. It goes to a hospital. The dog gets a manicure and a pedicure. But when they don't even pay you enough for you to get a pedicure. You see that thing? That's what we're reading here. So they're going to go to the same people that treat them less than even the dog they own. You can't make this up. Read the verse again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 24. Come on. For they went astray very far in the ways of error and held them for gods. 
which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised, mm -hmm. being deceived as children of no understanding. Yes, they are deceived. They are deceived. Give me that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2.21. They are deceived. Children of no understanding. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 2.21. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 21. Right. Such things they did imagine and were deceived. And were what? And were deceived. Is there such things did they imagine? Who's this? Uh, who, who are these people? Read verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. You see that thing? So the people that are having talk, speaking here is the ungodly that are reasoning among themselves, but not correctly, not according to the laws of God. So go back. Verse 21 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 21. Come on. Such things they did imagine and were deceived. Uh -huh. For their own wickedness has blinded them. You see that thing? So guess what? The blind is leading the blind. The toy soldier is fueled by children because children need a toy to play with. He is the toy. The people that are following him, they are the children. And children, the most like God says, children are miserable. But they, they are more miserable than the actual kids. And to take away their misery, they need a toy soldier. You understand? That's what the Lord is telling you right here. That's what we're seeing. And guess what? ENCA, they will parade this. They will parade him on, on the news. They will do that because the service seeking is pleasing to the white man. It's pleasing to the people that colonized us. When they look at him, they say, good. We've done a good job. That's a good house Negro. You understand? He's a good house Negro. He's willing to go to against his own people to please the slave master. You understand? Because who else is pleased by this? Think about it. Who else will be excited when he sees this toy soldier actually terrorizing his own people? Who will be pleased by that? Is not is is not sensible black men, but the other nations, they are the ones that are pleased by this. That's what I want you men and women to understand. Okay? Now, watch this. Give me the book of Job, chapter 5, verse 2. It says, being deceived, okay, as children of no understanding. Watch this. Give me Job 5 and 2. Job, chapter 5, verse 2. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 5, verse 2. Come on. For wrath killeth the foolish man. You see that thing? Wrath killeth the foolish man. The Lord says they are foolish. And you're going to see the tape, I mean, when I roll the tape, you're going to see how people are just foolish. Okay, go ahead. And envy slay the silly one. And envy will slay the silly one. Because what do they envy? They envy their slave master. So much so they are willing to destroy their own people so they can go back and crawl to the slave master to give jobs. Because that's the formula that they have. You understand? That is the formula. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. The most high God says they are children who have no understanding. Okay? They are deceived by their own wicked imagination. They are deceived by their own wickedness. Okay? The reason why they are behaving like this is all because of sin. Now read that. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. Read. How long ye simple ones mm -hmm. will you have simplicity? Come on. And the scorners delight in their scorning. Right. And the fools acknowledge. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, how long you simple ones? The most high God is insulting us once again. It says, how long you dumb ones? Leonardo dumb don't know. How long you going to be dumb? I gave you the greatest knowledge on earth, but you're still acting a fool out here. You understand? You're still acting dissolute and unrighteous. It says what? It says, and the scorners delight in their scorning. That's why they be singing, you understand? Singing songs of terror to terrorize their own people. It says, and fools hate knowledge. 
Because those are just fools. They hate the knowledge of God. All of what you see here, they are throwing ten times against this book. It's all spiritual. Don't be, don't be fooled. All of this gymnastics that you see is all to rebel against the laws of God. Understand that. Now, give me the book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 7. Proverbs 7 verse 7. Read that what you got. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 7. Read. I yelled among the simple ones. I descend among the youths, a young man void of understanding. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, and be held among the simple ones. Who's the simple one? The toy soldier called Kankala and the rest of his followers. They are the simple ones. You understand? Because it says, I descend among the youth. He's a youth. He's an amateur. You understand? A young man void of understanding. Because, because he's a young man void of understanding. The people that are following him, what do you think they're going to be? They also going to be void of understanding. That's what go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, chapter 12, verse 24 again. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12, verse 24. Read. For they went astray very far in the ways of error mm -hmm. and held them for gods, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised. Come on. Being deceived as children of no understanding. You see that thing? Being deceived of their own wickedness, which has blinded them. And guess what? It says, and as children of no understanding. That's why he says, I beheld among the simple ones, I descend among the youth, a young man void of understanding. The youth, you see that plural. Who's the youth? Children that have no understanding that are following the choice soldier. You understand? And he's a young man void of understanding. But because they themselves have no understanding, they cannot discern that he has no understanding. That's the point. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me Proverbs. Proverbs 9 verse 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 4. Come on. So it's simple. Let him turn in hither. As for him that wanted understanding, she said to him. The she is wisdom. The she is wisdom, it says. Whoso is, whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Meaning what? Come and learn. Because about our people are too prideful to say, I don't know. As for him that wanted understanding, meaning you lack understanding because these are the people that are following him. Because he also lacks understanding. The Lord says, she, which is wisdom, says unto him that is simple and wanted understanding. What does it say? Go ahead. Come, eat of my bread mm -hmm. and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Read. Forsake the foolish and live. Forsake the toy soldier. Forsake that foolish Toy soldier calling Kandala. That's what the Bible is saying. It says, Come and eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I've living. The bread and the wine represent the body of Christ, which is what? The Holy Bible. The Bible is the book of law and order. And our people hate both. Read. And go in the way of understanding. You see that thing? Forsake the foolish, because the Lord says, My people is foolish. They are sottish children. Yes, says, It says, Forsake the foolish and live. Because if you're following the foolish around, you're not going to leave. You're going to get put to death. He says, then go in the way of understanding. You need to keep God's commandment in the faith of his son. That's what he's saying like that. Okay? Now watch this. Give me, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 12. Read verse 25 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 25. Come on. Therefore unto them, as to children without the use of reason. You see that thing? Hold on. It says, therefore, Unto them as to children without the use of reason. These are because children don't know how to reason. And that's what you are seeing with this toy soldier. He's a child who has no reasoning capacity. He's just run by emotions. And you're going to see in the videos I'm going to show you now in a minute. Go ahead. Thou didst send a judgment to mock them. You see that thing? The Lord, how is the Lord mocking them? The Lord, yeah, I'm going to show you how the Lord is mocking them. You see this part, it says, therefore unto them as to children without the use of reason. So how is we supposed to reason according to the Bible? Give me that thing. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 2. Let's see, you understand, one of the soldiers of Christ, the apostle Paul. How did he reason? These are the examples we must follow. Okay, Acts, chapter 17, verse 2. Read that what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 2. Read. And Paul as his manner was, went in unto them 
and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. What did he do? And in three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. And three Sabbath days he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Not out of his emotion, you understand? But out of the scriptures. He reasoned with them. That's how we, that's how the most High God teaches us how we must reason. But these, this toy soldier has no reasoning capacity because he is not reasoning out of the scriptures. He is reasoning out of the what the wickedness of his own mind, his own imagination. Okay, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, twelve verse twenty-five. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter twelve, verse twenty-five. Come on. Therefore, unto them, as to children without the use of reason, thou didst send a judgment to mock them. He says, thou didst send them a judgment to mock them. The most that God mocks you, he mocks you with judgment. But let me show you something. Give me the book of Isaiah 3. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 5. Watch this. I'm going to show you how the most that God is mocking our people who do not want to return back to this book. They are joining toy soldiers, toy soldiers that are only, they only move because they are picked up by a child. They only sit, sit in, a, in, a, in, a, in a toy box because the child is tired of it. He put it back in the box. That's a toy soldier. Watch this. Here's what happens when a toy soldier is leading the charge. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 3 verse, uh, verse 5. This is how the most High God says, I'm going to mock you. Judgment. And this is the mockery. Watch this. Read it. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 5. Go ahead. Then the people shall be oppressed. Mm -hmm. Everyone by another, and everyone you know by his neighbor. Start at verse, start at verse four. Start at verse four. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter three, verse four. Mm -hmm. And I will give children to be their princes. You see that thing? It says, "And I will give you children to be your princes." Meaning what? Toy soldiers. Because the older men don't want to pick up this book. And do what it says so they can be leaders of the, the real leaders of the community. They don't want to do it. The Lord says, because of that, I'm going to give you children to be your princes. Go ahead. And babes shall rule over them. And children are going to rule over you. Toy soldiers. Go ahead. And the people shall be oppressed. And when, hold on. And when children are ruling over you, like the toy soldier calling Kandalak, guess what? It says the people will be oppressed. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. The Lord is letting you know. It says the people, it says what? It says, and the people shall be oppressed. Go ahead. Everyone by another. Go ahead. And everyone by his neighbor. That's what you are seeing right now. The people are now oppressed because toy so a toy soldier is in the front. You understand? He's in the front, dressed like a soldier, but he's not a soldier. You don't think like a soldier. We are the soldiers of Christ. And we think like Christ thinks because we do what this Bible says. We do our best to apply what this book says. But now they don't give a damn about this book. You understand? So that's why it says, because of that, I'm going to work up. The people will be oppressed because of this. That's what you are seeing. Mothers. I saw a mother from Limpopo being oppressed by this movement. Mm -hmm. A mother selling in Alex being oppressed and abused by wicked Negroes who don't know what to do with themselves because they are too idle. The Bible says idleness teaches much evil. And that's what you're seeing right now. Go ahead. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. You see that thing? I'm going to show you that in the video. It says the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Read. And the base against the honorable. And the base against the honorable. Because guess what? This operation to Dula is an operation of base men and women. Because they got no sense. Because the laws of God are not running the show. That's why I'm saying that. You understand? So that's what the Lord is saying right here. Go ahead. Keep going. You know what? Yeah, go ahead. Verse 6. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 6. Mm -hmm. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father. Right. Say, thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. You see that thing? Now they are tolerating their own brothers and sisters for goods that they are selling. You understand? To make ends meet to support their family. 
Now they are terrorizing the community because of that, because they are fed. All of this is based on attention. Because children, what, are, what, is, what, what, what do children do? Children that are not well nurtured, children that are not raised up the right way, children that have no guidance, children that have no sense, they throw tantrums. What you are seeing right now, that is a tantrum. You understand? This toy soldier called Tantalak, he's throwing a tantrum. Operation Dedula is a tantrum. Yes, sir. It's a tantrum. Because it's run by a boy, a toy boy, a boy toy that is void of understanding the Bible says. You understand? Watch this. Now, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, read verse 25 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Therefore unto them, as to children without the use of reason, thou didst send a judgment to mock them. You see that thing? So these children, because they have no use, they have no reasoning capacity, the Bible is saying. They what? They reason with their emotions. That's what you see. The media coverage, the news media, whenever this boy speaks, he's always speaking out of his own emotion. You understand? So the Lord says, I'm going to mock you by setting children over you. And once children are over you, the people are going to be oppressed. That's what you are seeing in the country now. Where our brothers from, Le, Le, our brothers from Lesotho, Botswana, they also are being terrorized by this operation. To do. You understand? You can't make this up. You cannot make this stuff up. Why? Because it's run by children void of understanding. You understand? Now watch this. Because the most High God is this. Because you, you don't want to keep my word, I'm going to appoint over you children and they're going to terrorize you. And that is what you're seeing. They are terrorizing the community. Okay? And guess what? Hmm. Go back. Go back to Isaiah. I'm going to show you when children are ruling over over us, you understand? They say the people are going to be oppressed. Who's fueling them? Because remember, children run on emotion. Children are miserable, the Bible says. Isaiah 3 verse 12. Let me show you who fuels their emotion. Watch this. Read that thing for me. Isaiah 3 verse 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are the oppressors. You see that thing? As for my people, children are their oppressors. So these children that will be ruling over the people, like the choice soldier calling Tantalak, he is that child that is oppressing the people. He says, when this, this type of people rule, these type of people are put in position of leadership, so-called leadership, he says, guess what? They are going to, the people are going to be oppressed in the community. And that's what you've been seeing. And guess what? Keep reading. Watch this. Guess who's behind the emotion? Read. And women rule over them. You see that thing? And women rule over them. The reason why you see such emotions, amateur hour, with this operation to do that, women rule over them. That's what the Bible is saying. They are ruled over by women. And women are emotional. Guess what? They, these men also, they are emotional. But because they, because they are men, they are not supposed to be more run by emotion. When they become emotional, they become monsters. You understand? That's the result of it. Really? O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. You see that thing? They which lead thee. Who's leading them? The women. These are the ones that are raised by their mothers when the father is not around. And if the father is around, the father's voice is not heard. You understand? That's why they grow up sucking on their mother's breast. 15, 20, 30 years old, they are still sucking on their mother's breast. They are being ruled over by their women. Go ahead. And destroy the way of thy parts. They were going to destroy the way of your path. The way of your path is the path that you're supposed to follow, which is the laws of God. They will destroy them. You understand? Go back to where was that? Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. Read verse 25 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 verse 25. Read. Really? Therefore unto them, as to children without the use of reason, thou didst send a judgment to mock them. You said, thou, send, thou didst send a judgment to mock them. So how is the Lord mocking them? He's mocking them by appointing over them toy soldiers who are full with emotions, ruled by their women, run by their mothers. You understand? Guess what? They are terrorizing the community when they quote-unquote leave. You see the problem? That, thing, that whole thing is a recipe for disaster. And I'm going to show you because 
Movements like Operation Bidula with toy soldiers like this, listen, they've been in the past before, but they never went anywhere. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of 1 Timothy 3 verse 6. Because remember, a toy soldier that is in the name is a toy that is being that is formed, that is being replicated into a soldier with that children play with. Watch this. When a toy, a toy soldier is run and ruled and controlled by emotions, the emotions of the people following the toy soldier, playing with the toy soldier, pressing his buttons, they say, yeah, we don't like, we hate these, we hate the brothers from them. We hate the brothers from that. He also jump up like a popcorn. Why? Because he's emotional. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in First Timothy 3 verse 6. First book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. Not a novice. Let's Not a what? Up. Not a novice. Not a novice. Meaning not an amateur. Because that's what you are seeing with this operation. This toy soldier, Mizantalag, he's a novice. What does the Bible say about a novice? Read that again. First book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. Read. Not a novice. Not a novice. Read. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. You see that thing? A novice, he says, will be lifted up with pride. Guess what's going to happen? He's going to fall into the condemnation of the devil. The condemnation of the devil is what? When you fight, like when you become a terror to yourself and a terror to your own people, then you have fallen into the condemnation of the devil because who's getting pleased? The devil. Who's there? The so-called white man. He becomes pleased by this. And the other nations that support this white man that's ruling the earth, they are also pleased when you go against your own people. That's simple as hell. That's what the Bible says, among the simple ones and among the youth, I descend a young man void of understanding. I'm paraphrasing it. Watch this. Because he's a novice, here's what happens next. Give me Sarah 22 verse 9. Because when you are a novice, you move by emotion because you are lifted up with pride. You understand? You will fall into the condemnation of the devil. Sarah 22 verse 9. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 verse 9. Go ahead. If children live honestly, and have and have wherewithal mm -hmm. they shall cover the baseness of their parents. You see what the Bible is saying? It's as if this is the if statement, is as if children live honestly and have wherewithal, meaning they have the basic things in life, shelter, clothing, you understand, bread and all that, and water, is as they shall cover the baseness of their parents. Meaning what they're gonna they're gonna what? They're gonna be an honor to their parents, they're gonna honor their father and their mother. You understand? Which is what you, God, you see, you don't see that now. Okay, well, go ahead. But children being hot Stop through right this thing. But children being what? But children being hot. But children being hot, meaning being proud. Because remember, it says, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride or haughtiness fall into the condemnation of the devil. Read that verse again, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 10. Go ahead. But children being hot, uh -huh. disdain and want of nurture do stain the, nobi the nobility of their kindred. You see what the Bible is saying? So a child that is not what? A child that is hot, meaning they are prideful, meaning they don't honor their father and their mother that they may live long, as they through disdain, meaning through hatred, and want of nature, meaning lack of nature. They have not been natured with the laws of God is that they're going to stain the nobility of their kindred, meaning they are going to empoison their brothers and sisters who are just innocent bystanders because what? They are vulnerable. So guess what he's doing, this toy soldier? Because he's filled with emotions, you understand? He's lifted up with pride. He's a novice. He's a child. He's going to what? His pride and his lack of wisdom and understanding is going to poison the nobility of his kindred. Meaning what? He's going to hate his own people. And he's going to infect them with that demon that's on him. Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 18 verse 15. So, and the reason why he's, all, he's able to gather so many people is because of this. I'm going to show you this. Watch this. Sarah chapter 18. Sarah verse 15. Watch this. 
the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 13, verse 15. Go ahead. Every beast loveth his life, mm -hmm. and every man loveth his neighbor. It says, every beast loveth his life. Meaning, beasts will, lion will be with a lion, will go, will deal with lions and all that. You understand? And tigers will deal with tigers. It says, every beast loveth his life, and every man loveth his neighbor. Go ahead. All flesh consorteth according to kind, mm -hmm. and a man will cleave to his like. You see that part right there? All flesh consorteth according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. So the reason why you see all these people are able to follow this toy soldier, calling Gangalak, is because the Bible says all flesh consorteth according to kind. Because they are already messed up. They are vulnerable, our people. They are looking, they are looking for leadership in all the wrong places it says what because they are still filled with sin confusion oppression vulnerability guess what they're gonna flock to where to where they, this this trumpet is being blown that's why they are following this choice of the foreign gangalas it says a man will cleave to his life because guess what listen that that's the spirit of deceit because you have to go down to find out what the people's grievances are and guess what? They, you know that the people will lift you up because you are scratching, the, you are scratching their age. You hate the brother from Zim? Yeah, I hate these foreigners. These are not foreigners. What are you talking about? The real foreigner, the white man, the Chinese man, the Arab man, they are sitting right there just watching you destroy yourself. You see that thing? Go ahead. Verse 17. What fellowship had the wolf with the lamb? What fellowship had the wolf with the lamb? None. Because the lamb will be eaten by the wolf. Okay, go ahead. So the sinner with the godly. So the sinner with the sinner and the godly cannot what? Cannot go walk hand in hand because the two are one is going to one way, the other one will go the other way. But the reason why they are able to follow him is because they all think the same way. Filled with emotion and without sense. Go ahead. What agreement is there between the hyena and the dog? What is the agreement between the hyena and the dog? None. Go ahead. And what peace between the rich and the poor? There is no peace between the rich and the poor because the rich oppresses the poor to stay rich. Go ahead. As the world asks in the lion's prey in the wilderness, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 13, verse 19. Read. Right? As the world as is the lion's prey in the wilderness, so the rich eat up the poor. That's the key right there. It says, as the world as is the lion's prey in the wilderness, so is the, so the rich eat up the poor. Yeah. The only reason why the rich stay richer, the poor get poorer. And that's the formula for their success. But that's for our detriment. You understand? But you've got these toy soldiers leading the charge. You see that guy also called Gaten McKenzie? He's also pushing the same thing because it's like they are, they are opportunists. They have to, they, in order for them, because they want positions of power, they are willing to exploit, destroy, oppress, depress, repress their own people to get there. That's what these Negroes be doing. That's what they are doing. Understand that? Okay. Watch this. Give me Luke chapter 7. Okay. Because remember, the audience that's fueling him, what does God call them? Children. God calls them children. Go back to wisdom of Solomon, okay? Because King Solomon spoke about this thing. The people that are fueling him, these are children just like him. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. Read verse 24 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 verse 24. Go ahead. For they went astray very far in the ways of error mm -hmm. and held them for God which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised, being deceived as children of no understanding. You see that thing? They are deceived as children of no understanding. So the people that are following this toy soldier, they are children. And children don't know anything. You understand? Luke 7 to 31. This is who's fueling him. Children are, are fueling him. Remember, a toy soldier... Is a doll, it's a non functioning replica of a soldier that children play with. 
This boy in Kantalak is a toy soldier. Guess who's supposed to play with him? The people. Who's the people? God says they are children. Children play with toys. Okay? Children play with toys. And children, they are the ones that make the toy do what they want. And that's what's going on right now. Okay? With this boy, you understand, with the people that are following him. Because you've got people that are even older than him, old enough to be his mother, following him. Because they also have what? The mindset, they've got the mindset of a child, the Bible says. Now read there. Luke 7, verse 31. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 31. Go ahead. And the Lord said, where unto then shall I liken the man of this generation? And to what are they like? You see what the Bible, this is Christ speaking. He says, what shall I compare? The, the word liken means compare. What shall I compare the men of this generation? And to what are they like? Go ahead. They are like unto children sitting. They are like unto what? They are like unto children. They are like unto children. 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 He says, the men of this generation, they are just like kids. Go ahead. Sitting in the marketplace. Because when children are sitting in the marketplace, they are idle. They don't know what they're supposed to do with themselves. And idleness teaches much evil. Go ahead. And calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. Uh -huh. We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. But remember, this toy soldier has wept. This toy soldier has mourned when they piped unto him. Remember, he's a toy soldier. When they pipe, when the children pipe unto you, you're gonna what? Guess what you're gonna do? Of course, you're gonna you're gonna we're gonna we're gonna what? You're gonna mourn. You're gonna dance. They pipe unto you, you dance. They mourn unto you, you weep. You weep. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah, now he's not doing the opposite. He's doing exactly what they are telling him to do. Because he's a toy soldier. Read the verse again. Verse 32. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 7 verse 32. Mm -hmm. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you and you have not danced. Wait. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. Yeah, now he has danced and he has wept. Why? Because he moves by emotion. He can only move if the child picks him up from the toy box. And that's what you are seeing now in the media. You understand? That's what you are seeing right now. So right now he's lifted up with pride. He has fallen into the condemnation of the devil. Now he is completely in the hands of Satan right now. Understand that? Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me Exodus 23 verse 2. Exodus chapter 23, verse 2. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 2. Go ahead. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't follow a multitude to do evil. And that's exactly what's going on. Our people, they are just following this movement. It's a multitude, but they are doing evil to their own people because they hate their own. They're terrorizing their own. They are oppressing their own to please the people that have colonized us stole our land, kill our mothers, kill our fathers, took everything from them. They are doing it to appease them. Read. Neither shall thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. You see what the Bible is saying? So now when we come with the Bible, they're not going to like what, we, what, what we're bringing up as a decision that says the Lord. But we don't give a damn. We get the seat, we're going to teach what the Bible says. No fear, no favor. Give me that Sirach 26 verse 5. Because a multitude that is doing evil, this is what the most High God says about it. Because what is the evil they are doing in the community? They are terrorizing our mothers that are setting up small uh, boxes, barikshari tamati and things like that, and onions. They are terrorizing them. You can't make this up. Okay? Read that for me. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 5. Read. Right? There be three things that my heart feareth. Mm -hmm. And for the fourth, I was so afraid. Go ahead. The slander of a city. The what? The slander of a city. So the Lord is going to name you the things that he says. They make him afraid. Not necessarily that the Lord is afraid. But he prayed for us. Because we wicked as hell. And for the fourth, I was so afraid. Watch this. The slander of a city. You don't see that? 
You don't see that going on, Coca, you go Alex, also wait, you go this loot. Hmm? You don't see that. You don't see the slander of the city. Our people being terrorized by their own, led by a toy soldier. You don't see that? Go ahead. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. Is it the gathering together of an unruly multitude? Because why? They are what? They are doing evil that we read in Exodus 23. Is it the gathering together of an unruly multitude? Go ahead. And a false accusation. And a false accusation because they go to people's houses. They are saying, no, you don't have no papers, but they have no proof. They go into people's houses. They say, no, we are going to raid you. We're going to keep you out of your houses and all that. But they have no warrant. False accusation. Running on emotion. Go ahead. All these are worse than death. You see what the Bible is saying? It says all these things, they are worse than death. They are worse than death because they are causing terror in the community. They are terrorizing mothers and fathers, grandfathers and grandmothers. You understand? It says all these things, they are worse than death. Give me Acts chapter 19, verse 32. You understand? This unruly multitude, guess what? Not all of them are on one accord, and I'm going to prove that. Because remember, all of them, if not all of them, but the majority of them, they are Christians. You can believe that because they go to church on Sunday, they pray, they, they say they praise the Lord, right? But when they pray, they see a white man that is disguised himself as Jesus, the Christ of the Bible. All of them go to church, majority of them, and they worship the white supremacy. They worship the white image of Jesus, the image of the beast. That's why they hate their own people because they've been conditioned to hate their own with white Jesus. Now read that for me. Acts 19, verse 32. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 32. What? Some therefore cried one thing, and some uh -huh. another. Hold on. Some therefore cried one thing. Yeah, we want the foreigners to go. Ye, 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 ye. You understand? Some cried one thing. Go ahead. And some cried another. And some another. Yeah. And some another. We want jobs. Foreigners are taking our jobs. Hmm. Go ahead. For the assembly was confused. The assembly was confused. Because, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again. Let's say our, so our brothers and sisters, they go back to Mozambique, the Congo, Guinea, Ghana, Nigeria. You understand? This toy soldier, is he going to give them jobs? Hell no. Is he going to give, buy them houses? Hell no. He's not going to do that. Because that assembly is confused. If that were to happen, guess what? In unemployment will still be high. Poverty will still be a, a reality. It's not going to change that. You understand? Because the same toy soldier, he has to go to the slave master to ask for a job for the people. He's not going to provide them there. Because if that was the case, there wouldn't be a need for all this confusion that you are seeing. I get what he was going to do was going to buy a huge piece of land and build a, build multiple factories and businesses and employ the people. I get that's the mindset of a leader, right? But he's not a leader. He's a toy soldier. That's the point. You understand? Read the verse again, verse 32. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 32. Go ahead. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another. Mm -hmm. For the assembly was confused, and the, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. Is there more, the more, many people didn't even know why they came together in the first place. Because they are not on one accord. After they done toy toying, everybody goes back to their houses, they do their own thing. They are not on the same mind, they don't do the same thing. Neither do they believe the same thing. You understand? Spiritually, they are divided. Mentally, they are divided. Understand that? Now watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 20, verse 4. I brought this out. I posted this on the group. Jeremiah 20, verse 4. Because what this operation to do is doing, guess what? That's a new way. That's a new form of gangsterism. That's a new form of gangsterism that is terrorizing our community. The same thing that you see in, in, in Cape Town. You understand? The video I just po I posted earlier during the day. What they are doing over there, the so-called colors over there killing one another, that's the same thing that this operation to do like doing. 
killing their own people, okay, because of what? They are filled, they are filled with rage and hatred. Read that. Jeremiah 20 verse 4. This is what the Lord says because we rejected his word. This is what he says he's going to do to us. Read it. The book of Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 4. Go ahead. For thus said the Lord, Behold, mm -hmm. I will make thee a terror to thyself. You see that thing? He says, I'm going to make you a terror to your own self. Remember it says, Children will be their princes and they shall rule over them and the people shall be oppressed. And that's what we're reading here. Because children will be what? Children will be put in position of power, fueled by emotions of the people. It says what the Lord says, I will make you a terror to yourself. Go ahead. And to all thy friends. And to all thy friends, your own people. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the sword of their enemies. There it says what? You're going to fall by the sword of your enemies. Because our, remember, we are in slavery. Everything we need, we go to our enemies for that. It says you're going to fall by the sword of your enemies. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall, shall behold it. You're going to see it go down. Go ahead. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. Now we are, in, we are under Babylon the Greek, the United States of America. Go ahead. And he shall carry them captives unto, into Babylon and shall slay them with the sword. That's why they took us over, they colonized us, they took everything from us. Now, generations later, you've got unlearned, young youth, void of understanding, talking about, no, 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 you are a foreigner, you must go back to Mozambique. Who divided more? Who divided the continent up? Do you know any history, you toy soldier? No history whatsoever. And if they do, they just ignore it. Why? Because there's a deeper agenda to please master in order for master to what? To give you leniency that if you're willing to destroy your own people, I'm going to hire you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give your people jobs. What does that mean? You just prove to the white man that you are willing, that you just prove to him that you are disloyal. You are willing to destroy your own people for my sake. Guess what? You think this white man is going to trust you? No. He's not going to trust you. Because you can be even be trusted with your own people. You are willing to destroy them in his eyesight. You see that thing? I want you men to understand what's going on with this. Okay? Give me that in, um, give me that, give me Isaiah 9 verse 16. Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9 verse 16. Mm-hmm. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. You see that thing? For the leaders of these people cause them to err. Go ahead, meaning to sin. Right? And they that are led of them are destroyed. He's going to destroy these people that are following him. All of them, the mothers, the children, the sisters, guess what? He's going to destroy them all. I'm going to show you that in the Holy Bible. Give me First Maccabees 11 verse 21. First Maccabees chapter 11. Verse 21. Because what he's doing, he's willing to destroy his own to please who? The only people that are pleased with what is Operation Tukula is who? Is our enemies. The people that colonize us, the people that own the economy. You understand? They are the people that are pleased with this. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter 11, verse 21. Let me show you the mindset of this toy soldier in Tantalak. Watch this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 21. Go ahead. Then certain ungodly persons. Certain ungodly persons. Who hated their own people. You see that thing? Certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. The reason why he's able to hate his own people is because he's ungodly. Because if he knew the law, give me that in Leviticus 19, 17. Because this is the law that he's supposed to know about. You understand? This is the law. Leviticus 19, verse 17. But because he's a young man void of understanding, he doesn't know this basic law. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. That's the law. Thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. Your brother is your brother from the Congo because guess what? We are Jews. We are the children of Israel. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. So it says, thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Okay, read verse 18. Come on. 
Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Three. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. That's the Lord right there. He says, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Then your neighbor is not talking about the Chinese man that is staying next to you. Then your neighbor is not talking about the Arab man that stays next to you. No. Your neighbor is the children of your people. Your neighbor is the children of your people. Read the verse 18 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. You see that thing? That's your neighbor. Your neighbor is the children of your people, your race, your tribe, your lineage. That's, the, that's your neighbor. He's not talking about the white man that is next to you. That's not your neighbor. You understand? It says the children of thy people. That's the royal law. Give me that in James 2. James chapter 2. Remember, the, the, the scripture says he's dissolute, morally bankrupt. Okay? James 2. James chapter 2, read that. Verse 8. The book of James chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, mm -hmm. thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. You see that thing? It says, if you fulfill the royal law, because remember, we are royalty. How do we govern ourselves with the, the royal law that God gave? You understand? You love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But he doesn't know he's royalty. He doesn't know how to apply the royal law. You understand? So go back to First Maccabee chapter 11, verse 21. First book of Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 21. That's why this is going on. Go ahead. Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people uh -huh. went unto the king and told him that Jonathan besieged the tower. You see that thing? Went unto the king, the certain ungodly persons who don't obey the royal law, who hated their own people, hence why they're doing it, went unto the king. Who's the king now? The king of Babylon. You understand? Because the Greeks were ruling during this time. So today, the Greeks are still ruling because America is an extension of ancient Rome, which comes out of the Greeks. It's the same people. Today, because they call themselves Europeans and, and Americans. Okay? It says, went unto the king and told him that Jonathan besieged the tower. So guess what they're doing? They are willing to make deals with master to the, for the destruction of their own people so they can benefit. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1 and 2. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Let's go to, the, let's go to during the time of the Acts of the Apostles. When they are the followers of Christ, the believers of Christ, they taught that the, the true gospel of Christ, you had many of our people that were terrorizing those that followed the true gospel of Christ. And Saul was one of them. Read that. Acts 8 and 1. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 1. Go ahead. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. You see that thing? It says there was a great persecution against the church, which was, which was at Jerusalem, meaning the true followers of Christ at that time. Go ahead. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So now what was going on here is that the Apostle Paul was what? Was terrorizing the followers of Christ. Jump down to verse 3. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. You see that thing? He made havoc of the church. I'm going to show you how they are making havoc of the church because the church is the 12 tribes of Israel. The only church in the Bible is the children of Israel. Go ahead. Entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Yeah, I'm going to show you that. It says hailing men and women and committing them to prison. I'm going to show you that. Okay? Just give me a minute. Okay, watch this. Give me Acts 12 verse 1. Acts chapter 12. So what was going on here is you, you see you had black men terrorizing other black men talking about no, they are foreigners. Watch this. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to show you the motive behind why they are doing this. Watch this. So, 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 they started to persecute the church, right? Black on black crime. 
So when they saw black on black crime, guess who followed to do it now? Because now they give him, him they gave Rome the carte blanche or the right to also do it. Watch this. After this is the cause, what we read in X8 and 1 and 1 and 3, that's black on black crime, which is what you are seeing with Operation Bidula with these toy soldiers. That's on black, black on black crime. You know what? Hold this. Give me the book of Hosea real quick. I'm going to show you what they're doing. It's black on black crime. Give me that in Hosea 4 verse 1. Okay? Watch this. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 verse 1. Go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Come on. Because there is no truth. You see that thing? God says he's got a controversy against us. Because there is no truth. We don't keep no laws. Go ahead. No mercy. No mercy. Because what you see with Operation Bidula, they don't apply no mercy whatsoever. Because why? They hate their own people. Go ahead. No knowledge of God in the land. No knowledge of God in the land. There's the knowledge of God in the land is not there. Go ahead. By swearing and lying. You see that thing? They swear, they lie. Go ahead. And killing and stealing. Killing and stealing, come on. And committing adultery. Committing adultery. Because I bet you, you know what the problem is with these movements or Operation Pidula? These so called leaders, man, because they are not leaders at all, they don't teach the people to change. None of them do it. They don't teach the black man to grow a beard on his face, to put on fringes, to get a job, marry his woman, stop popping babies. They don't teach the black woman to put on a long dress to stop showing her behind, her breast is out. They don't do that. They don't teach, none of them, or none of them require the people to change. When you notice all these um, quote unquote so called leaders that rise up, none of them, they all have one thing in common. They don't require the people to change. Because why? Because now they know that the people are not going to follow. The people are not going to, the people are, they're going to lose. They're going to lose followers. That's the point. You understand? Go ahead. They break out and blood touches blood. They break out and blood touches blood. Meaning they fight one with another and blood touches blood. They kill their own people. And that's what we just saw. One brother from them, he lost his life. You understand? In deep sleep. Blood touches blood. You can't make this up. Yet. You cannot make this stuff up. Okay, now Acts 12, verse 1. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Read. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. You see that thing? Because what example did he see? He saw examples of black men killing other black men because they just consented to, to killing Stephen in Acts 8 and 1. Acts 7, they killed Stephen. Now in Acts chapter 8, they are continuing to want to terrorize the church even more. So when Herod, Herod is a white man. You understand? This is Rome now. It's a stretch for his hand to vex section of the church. Whose example is he following? He's following the example of black men that were killing other black men during the time of the Acts of the Apostles. Herod, the white man, he's just following the example. You understand? Go ahead. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. You see what he did? How did he break the of the church? Read that verse again, verse 2. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 2. Read. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. That's how he break the of the church. He killed the apostle James with the sword. Herod did that. This white man. And guess what? That's the same thing that the colonizers did. The people that took our land and our resources oppressed us, still oppressing us under apartheid. Is this what? They, they proceeded to kill our forefathers. Guess when they were doing that, who was, who was okay with that? Watch this. Go ahead. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. You see that thing? Because Herod saw that our forefathers were pleased when, they were, when, when Herod killed the apostle James. He said they were happy about it. It pleased our forefathers when this white man was killing one of their own. Because you're already doing it, black on black crime. 
Now the white man is just following after your footsteps. So when you were killing each other, who was pleased? The white man. So when they are doing this operating with Dula, who's pleased by this? Again, the white man. He is pleased. The other nations, they just sit back and laugh at us. You understand? Read again verse 3. Come on. With Acts chapter 12, verse 3. Come on. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Mm -hmm. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So he proceeded to take the apostle Peter also. But he was unable to kill the apostle Peter, although he detained him in order to want to, to, to publicly kill and execute the apostle Peter. But that wasn't the plan at that point of the most high. You understand? But what I'm showing you is you always had, you always had our people that were killing their own and who was pleased. The nation, the other nations are pleased when we do that. That's why when they do it, the people that hate their own, they get pleased by that. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me, okay, give me the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 36. I'm gonna let me, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you back. I'm gonna show you something, okay. Acts chapter 5 and 36, because you had, during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, you had many sects that rose up, many movements that rose up, you understand? And guess what? The ones that the Lord approved of was the, the apostles that taught the gospel. The rest, they just fizzled out over time. Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 5 and 36. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 5 is 36. Go ahead. For before these days rose up Thedas. Thedas. So Thedas rose up. Thedas, he rose up, right? Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 5 is 36. Ray. For before these days rose up Thedas, boasting himself to be somebody. Stop right there. So Thedas rose up, boasting himself to be somebody, a toy soldier, like in Gangalak. He rose up, boasting himself to be somebody. Go ahead. To whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves. So 400 men joined the movement. About 400 men was following him, right? Go ahead. Who was slain. Who was what? Who was slain. They were all put to death. Go ahead. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. They were brought to nothing. That movement didn't go nowhere. The movement that you see with this operation is not going to go nowhere because it has no substance. It, it does, it's not a good plan. It's a poorly executed plan. There's no vision. And when no vision is, what happens to the people? Read that verse again, then we're going to go to Proverbs. The book of Acts chapter 5 is 36. Go ahead. But before these days rose up to us, boasting mm. himself to be somebody to whom a number of men about 400 joined themselves. You see, 400 joined him. Go ahead. Who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. They were brought to nothing. They were brought to naught, meaning that movement did not go anywhere. Give me that in Proverbs 29, verse 18. Watch this. Proverbs 29, verse 18. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Come on. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You see that? Where there is no vision, the people perish. That's why I ask the question. When, when our brothers, when our brothers, the so-called foreigners, go back to Ghana, Guinea, Nigeria, Mozambique, and so forth, Botswana, Lesotho, when they go back, is this boy going to give them job? Hell no. He's not going to give them job. He's going to crawl back to master to beg for one. Read the verse again, verse 18. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Read. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Come on. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You see that thing? You keep God's commandments, guess what? You are going to be happy because the Lord will prosper you. So go back. Go back to Acts chapter 5, verse 36 again. Because, because there was no vision here, the people perished. Students, he didn't have a vision. Okay, read it. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 36. For before these days rose up Judas, 
boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. So many were put to death, but the rest, he says, they, those that followed him, he says, they were scattered and they were brought to nothing. Because that movement was not going to do nothing. It's not of no purpose. It's not going to raise the 12 tribes of Israel. It's only to scatter the sheep even more. That's what they are doing. Watch this. Let me, let's go back into the path. Give me the book of 2 Samuel chapter 15. 2 Samuel. This is Absalom, okay? King David's son. Let me show you what he did. Absalom. 2 Samuel 15, start of verse 4. 2nd book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 4. Read. Absalom said, moreover, Oh, that I will make judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. You see what Absalom was? That was his mindset. He was like, listen, he wanted to overthrow his father. And guess what? He waited, what he waited, I think, what? 40 years, he waited to overthrow his father from his kingship. It says, Absalom has said, moreover, all that I were made judge in the land, that every man which had any suit or cause, meaning what? You got problem, might come unto me and I would do him justice. That's what this boy is doing. This toy soldier, that's what he's doing. He's got the spirit of Absalom. Keep going, watch this. Read. Second book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 5. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. So he was battering the people. He's demoning Absalom was a slick name. That's what Absalom was. Absalom was a slick name. That's what you are seeing with this choice soldier right here. in Dangalag. Okay? He's slick. Read. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. Hmm. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. You see that? He says, Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. That's what Absalom did. And that's what this boy is doing. Because now, like I said, he's going to jail over and over. The people, guess what? Now he's getting more and more followers. Guess what? They are all going to be brought to nothing. Some of them are going to get hurt. The rest will scatter and they will be brought to naught. It happened in the past. It's going to happen again. So guess what? It's like a train waiting to crash. Understand that? Go ahead. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 10. Read verse 10. Second book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 10. Uh -huh. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying... That's why now these branches are popping up all over the place. He says, but Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel. Read. Say... As soon as he hear the sound of the trumpet, then he shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. He's setting himself up. Read, watch this, verse 11. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem. 200. So remember, Thuras had what? Was it 400? So he's got 200 men out of Jerusalem that followed him. Watch this, read. That were called. And they went in their simplicity. They did what? And they went in their simplicity. So these 200 men, they were all dumb. That's the same thing you read in the book of Acts 5, 36. You understand? They also, they also went in their simplicity. Go ahead. And they knew not anything. They didn't know nothing. They were just dumb as hell. Dummy. So that's what the Bible is telling you right there. It says they went in their simplicity. And they knew not anything. Because why? Because they were following a toy soldier. This boy in Tanta Life is a toy soldier. He's a non-functioning replica of a soldier that children play with. Now watch this. Give me, okay, give me the book. No, 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 keep going, keep going. Read the top. Watch this. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, gave its counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for mm. the people 
increased continually with Absalom. You see that thing? But these, these, these dummies, they increased continually with Absalom. And that's what we're seeing with this toy soldier and Dandala. It says, and the conspiracy was strong. What are they conspiring to do? To destroy their people, their brothers and sisters from neighboring countries. That's the conspiracy. You understand? That is the conspiracy. Give me the book. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 12 and 6. I'm going to show you in history, toy soldiers who didn't know anything, they did not want to learn nothing. Watch this. Give me 1 Kings chapter 12 and 6. Here's another, here's another toy soldier, Rehoboam. Watch this. That's the spirit of Rehoboam is the spirit of Absalom, which is the spirit of Sudas, which is the spirit of Angandalax. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 6. Come on. First book of Kings chapter 12 verse 6. Read. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he had lived and so said. So now, so, so Rehoboam, he consulted with the wise men that used to counsel King Solomon his father, right? Go ahead. And said, how do you advise that I may answer these people? So how do you advise that I may answer these people? So just to catch you up, what's happening here is um, Jeroboam is now, um, this is not because Jeroboam was over northern Egypt. So now they are coming to speak to Rehoboam because he's the new king. You understand? To say, listen, um, when your father was ruling over us, he was not dealing with the people right. So now that you are king, we want you to deal with us correctly. So he said, listen, uh, go away for three days. I'm going to think upon this man. He went to consult with the, with the old man that used to, to advise King Solomon, right? Watch this. You would think that that's what he wants to do, but that's not what he wants to do. Go ahead. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto these people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. So now they are giving him a solution on how he must move. You understand? Because guess what? He's going to serve based on what? Because he's going to have counselors so that they can be able to guide him on how to move. Go ahead. Watch this. But he forsook the counsel of the old, of the old men. You see what he did? He forsook the counsel of the old men. He said to hell with the, old, the counsel of the old men that I've experienced. They said, I'm not going to listen to that. Go ahead. Which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. You see what he did? He consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. And we stood before him. So he consulted with the kids that he grew up with. Because this is amateur hour. That's what this toy soldier is about. This, that's what Ndanda likes is. Nganda life is got the spirit of Rehoboam. He's consulting with the young man that he's growing up with because they are, they are pushing his button. Remember, he's a toy soldier. He only moves when children want to play. When children don't want to play, he don't do nothing. That's what an idol is. An idol only moves when the people want to go and worship and serve and bow down to and bend incense unto him. You understand? So that's what we are seeing here. Okay, now watch this. Jump down. Let me show. Let's see how he can. How what what counsel did the young man give him? We on. And he said unto them, "What counsel give ye? Give ye that we may answer these people who have spoken to me, saying, make the, make the yoke which thy father which thy father did put upon us lighter.' Really? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying. Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father make our, made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. You see what he's saying? Very disrespectful. He says, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. He's kissing them out. You understand? He's insulting them. He says, I'm gonna be harder than you. I'm gonna be more harder than I'm gonna be more hard on you than what my how my father was. That's the counsel of the young man. You see this? And guess what? Who's fueling this boy? He's being fueled 
by our people that hate their own people that are full of rage and anger, they are full of hatred, guess what? They are the people that are ruling him because they want to take out their anger and their frustrations out on their own people. But they're not going to take out their frustrations on the white man. They're not going to take out their frustrations on the East Indian man or the Chinese man. They, are, they, 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 see, me, they see fit to take out their frustrations on their own people because why? They hate their own people. That's what we read in First Maccabees. Okay? Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 47, verse 23. Ecclesiasticus 47, verse 23. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 23. Go ahead. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers, and of his seed he left behind him Roboam. Roboam. Roboam is Rehoboam. So Solomon died and left his son behind, Roboam. Go ahead. Even the foolishness of the people. You see what Rehoboam was? Rehoboam was the foolishness of the people. That's what you are seeing when Gangalak destroys all you. He is the foolishness of the people. Go ahead. And one that had no understanding. He has no understanding whatsoever. He's a young man, boy of understanding. Go ahead. Who turned away the people through his counsel. He destroyed the people through his wicked demonic counsel. We. There was also Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Jeroboam was over northern kingdom. Come on. Who caused Israel to sin and showed Ephraim the way of sin. You see that thing? So when Rehoboam and Jeroboam was ruling, there was much evil going on in Israel. You understand? Read. And their sins were multiplied exceedingly, that they were driven out of the land. Now, now we are in the land of our captivity now. Now we are in slavery, calling ourselves so-called South Africans. Our brothers are in the Congo calling themselves Congolese. Our brothers in Nigeria calling themselves, yeah, you know, in Nigeria calling themselves Nigerians and so forth. You see this? Our people from Mozambique calling themselves Tonga, people from the East. They are letting you know where they come from, Jerusalem, okay? So the point I'm showing you is, you had many examples in the Bible of wicked Negroes who had no understanding you understand? And they were causing terror in the community. They were not building the people. They were not teaching the people the laws of God. They were destroying the community. Because why? They are filled with emotions and rage. That's what you are seeing. You understand? Give me that in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 3. Watch this. But a leader, the most that God is giving you qualifications for leadership. You understand? Give me that in 2 Samuel 23, verse 3. Watch this. Second book of Samuel, chapter 23, verse 3. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. Mm -hmm. Ruling in the fear of God. That's the, that, you see, that's the stipulation. He says, he that, he says what? He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. Okay? But because... That's not what's happening with this choice soldier. Go back to 1 Timothy 3 verse 6. Let's not forget that thought. Okay? First book of Timothy. Chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. Not a novice. Not a what? Not a novice. Not a novice. Not an amateur. Go ahead. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because the only reason why he's doing this is to please the slave master. So the slave master can say, okay, I'm going to trust you with my affairs now that you are willing to show me that you will destroy your own people to get with me. You see that thing? Watch this. Let's play some videos. Okay? So you can see really how far this rabbit hole goes. Watch this. One command. There's one command. But South Africans are tired. And this war against foreigners is not a war against black foreigners. Even China and tell you for it. We have a long 
We have a long list of what foreigner is. And today, on Osa TV, about the media, but the foreigners are only Africans. We call you Ruta Rari Tutula, the foreigner Tutula. So, I so, so what you are saying is that um, the foreigners is not only just dealing with, is not only attacking black people, right? That's what he just said. Anybody heard him, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's saying he's yeah. only, at, he's, he's, he's going to be, he's, he's, they're also dealing with the, the Chinese man. You notice he doesn't mention the white man. <laughs> he says, we only dealing with this, the foreigners, we only also going to deal with the Chinese man and all that. Let's see if that's true. Let's play the next video. Now, this is the next video. Let's see if that's true. Remember, it says, he that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God, right? But he also must be just, meaning he wants to be, keep the laws of God, speak honest, speak the truth. Let's see the video that we just saw, if it matches up with what we're about to see. You see that? It says we're not going to beg Zimbabweans. So I'm not, I'm not hearing anything about Chinese, nothing about the Arab, nothing about the white man. The, 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 the Zimbabwean so-called, that's the brother from Zen who was colonized by the British, who colonized Asia in 1820. Okay. That's the toy soldier right there. That's the non-functioning replica of a soldier that children play with. Who's the children? The people that are singing. That's the children. Uh, I'm going to fire. I'm it. Yeah. I'm with peace. I'm going to Yes. Spelling J. I'm a South African. I'm going to say, 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 i Sfunama South Africa ni ange nekule tolls lazy. Lay tolls belongs to South Africans. Not illegal. Yes. So Sankela, Bakani, Gamnandi, as funi sweet, as funi apule, as stone chitina. So spera uti ni hambin. Momo ya umuse. So buya futik sasa. This is a monitor. I saw him. I saw him down, man. This is a vessel. Tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Singanbonila. Until, until, until listen, this is some there. evil demonic stuff. Listen, listen. I gotta get a description. Go back to Isaiah chapter three verse four again. Isaiah three verse four. Because what they are doing here, they don't see nothing wrong with it. That's why the, that's why the Bible says he's dissolute. Let's get there. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon, they don't know the difference between right and wrong. That's what the Bible says. Now read that. Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter, chapter 12. Um, read verse 23 again. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12. Verse 23. Wait. Wherefore, whereas men have lived dissolutely and unrighteous, mm -hmm. thou hast tormented them with their own abomination. So now he says, Wherefore, he says, Wherefore, whereas men live dissolutely and unrighteously. What does it mean to live dissolutely? What does it mean to be dissolute? Let's go back to the definition so we understand what it means. Okay? Dissolute. Let's go back. Let's go back there. Read the definition again. Desolute. Read it. The definition of desolute. Reading from vocabulary.com. The adjective desolute means unrestrained. Mm -hmm. If you are a desolute person, you engage in the kinds of behaviors that cause disapproval. 
That's what you're just seeing right here. Remember they said, no, um, the, the definition of foreigner, we're not only just targeting blacks, but that's what we're seeing. That's what they're doing. Targeting their own people. That's just a small screen. They're not gonna, they're not gonna go after the white man. They are not going to do it. You understand? Now, let's get some more. Keep reading. But someone who is dissolute not only goes against the grain of normal behavior, but is wasteful and offensive. You see that thing? They are wasteful. They are wasting the, the property of our brothers and sisters. You're going to see that in the video as we play on. And they are offensive over the limit. Meaning they are going, listen, you see the line of normalcy, they will go beyond it. That's the mind of the Negro. Okay? The Negro is a phenomenon, I'm telling you. Now read that. Adjective. Read that for me. Definitions of dissolute. Adjective. Unrestrained by convention or morality. They are not restrained by convention or morality because they are immoral. Read that now. Read that thing for me. Watch this. Deliberately violating accepted principles of right and wrong. They are deliberate, meaning they are going out of their way to violate accepted principles of right and wrong. What is the principles of right and wrong? God's laws. The laws of God teaches you right from wrong. Get that in Strike 17. Okay. God's laws teach you right from wrong. Okay, Strike chapter 17. Um Read verse, read verse 7. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 7. Read. Right. With all, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and showed God them. Filled us. Hold on. God filled us with the knowledge of what? With all, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding. He filled us with the knowledge of understanding, which is the laws of God. Come on. And showed them good and evil. You see that thing? And he showed us good and evil. Because the knowledge of understanding is going to teach us what? Good and evil. Right from wrong. But a dissolute person, they don't know the difference between right and wrong. They don't. And that's what you are seeing here. That is what you see. Watch this. Give me that in second Ezra, right? Because Ezra, he mentioned the same thing. You understand? When Moses gave us the law, we despise the laws of Moses. Second Ezra 9. Get Second Ezra chapter 9. Read verse. Start at verse. Start at verse 8. Second Ezra 9, verse 8. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 8. Go ahead. Shall be preserved from the same perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So the Lord sanctified us for himself from the beginning, meaning from the time of Genesis. Hold that. Go, go to 2nd Ezra chapter 7. 2nd Ezra chapter 7. Read verse 59. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 7 verse 59. Mm -hmm. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived. Read. He said, Choose the life that thou mayest live. You see that thing? The life that Moses spake unto us in the wilderness, that was what? He gave us the commandments. He says, choose life that thou mayest live. But what did Israel do? Next verse. Go ahead. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. Mm -hmm. No, nor me, which have spoken unto them. He says, they didn't believe Moses. They didn't believe the prophets that came after Moses. Neither did they believe what Ezra was teaching them. Go ahead. That there should not be such heaviness in their destruction. Read. Really? As shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. So those that will have joy is those that will be persuaded of salvation. Because what we do it is salvation. And salvation you get it through what? The keeping of God's laws. Those that are going to be persuaded is those that are going to humble down to what this Bible says and do it, and they're going to get delivered when the Lord is here. You understand? Watch this. Second as us go back to second as us nine. Second as us nine, verse nine. Watch this, because they what they just despise the laws of God. They don't know. They don't. They don't know the right the difference between right and wrong because 
They rejected the life that Moses spake unto us in the wilderness, which is the commandments of the Most High. Read that. Second Ezra 9, verse 9. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Read. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. That's the second death. So it says, listen, they are going to be in pitiful case, like you see, when you read, when you see the, the brother that saw Lazarus, you understand? It says, which now have abused my ways, because that's what they are doing now, abusing the liberty that Christ made us free from the old covenant of animal sacrifice, and that they have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. You know, they're going to get judged for that. You understand? So they are dissolute. Read the definition again. Deliberately doing what? Deliberately violating accepted principles of right and wrong. You see that thing? Deliberately, deliberately avoiding or violating accepted principles of right and wrong. Meaning what? They don't care about the law. Black men hate law and order. And that's what that's the chaos you see with this operation to do that stuff. You understand? Chaos. That's what you see. So let's go back to the video. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So look at that. Are they not spoiling the people's goods? Are they not terrorizing their own people? Are they not setting their goods on fire? That's what they do. They, our brothers and sisters didn't get these things for free. Are you seeing this? This is terrorism. This is gangsterism. That's what you see here. Because they are being led by a toy soldier, void of understanding, no vision. Terrorizing their own people. Who do you think is pleased when they watch this? The white man is the one that gets pleased when this takes place. The Chinese man gets pleased when this takes place. The Arab man gets pleased when this takes place. He is a Negro. Without the Bible, he is dumb as hell. And that's what you are seeing. Foolishness. You understand? This is what happens when you are led by a toy soldier. Isaiah 3 now, verse 4. Give me that real quick. Isaiah 3, verse 4. Because I wanted to go here in the first place. Let's read it. Okay? The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 4. Go ahead. And I will give children to be their princes. Mm -hmm. They shall rule over them. You see that thing? I will give children to be their princes, and they shall rule over them. What's the problem with the with, with the black community? Niggas. That's what that's what's wrong with our community. Niggas. And that's what you are seeing. This operation to do that. Yeah, so niggas in the Bible. Let's get it real quick. Give me Acts 13, verse 1. Okay. Because it is in the Bible. Nigger just means black. Now read what you got. Acts 13, verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 1. Wait. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. Certain prophets and teachers, come on. As Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. You see that thing? Barnabas and Simeon, they were called nigger. Niggas in the Bible, nigger, nigger just means black. Okay? Go ahead. And Lucius of Cyrene. That's it on there. Go back. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 4. 
the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 4. Go ahead. And I will give children to be their princes mm -hmm. and babes shall rule over them. And when babes are ruling over the people, this is the result of it. This is what you see. Terror in the community. Operation Dudula is not different from these gangs that are terrorizing our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our uncles coming from work, robbing and raping and stealing. That's the same thing they're doing to their own people. So don't be fooled, brothers and sisters. Okay, read on. Verse 5. Come on. And the people shall be oppressed. And the people shall be oppressed. When toy soldiers, meaning young men, amateurs, you understand, are in the position of power, this is what takes place. This is the result of it because they have no experience. They don't know what the hell they are doing. Going to the military for a year where you call yourself a veteran. You can't make this up. Read verse 5 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 5. Read. And the people shall be oppressed. Uh-huh. Everyone by another. Everyone by another. Come on. And everyone by his neighbor. And everyone by his neighbor. That's what you are seeing here. Read. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. And the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. That is what you see. You are about to see it right now. The child will behave himself proudly against the ancient. Come on. And the base against the honorable. And the base, meaning the dumb one, against the honorable one. Watch this. <laughs> This was you understand? Because these are children, the Bible says. They don't know nothing. What did they do? Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 8, verse 3. Because we read it early. Okay. Acts 8 verse 3. I know some of you forgot already. Watch this. Acts chapter 8 verse 3. When this black on black cry. Read it. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 3. Come on. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. That's what you are seeing. A toy soldier making havoc, terrorizing his own people. Go ahead. Entering into every house. Uh-huh. And hailing men and women committing committed them to prison that's what you are seeing right here hailing men and women and committing them to prison that is what you are witnessing right here don't come back here we want to set you on fire this is the this, what you see here. These are all tantrums against the laws of God. So instead of returning back to the Holy Bible to do what this Bible says, so we can rule the earth, the black man has, has, has reduced himself to this degenerate that we are seeing here. This is degeneracy. You understand? This is degeneracy at its best. That's what you're seeing. I'm telling you, they are doing this because they are pleasing the white man. I'm, and I'm going to prove it in the Bible because I'm going to show you throughout history what our people always did to please master. You understand? That's not a man, brother. That's a boy. That's not a man, that's a boy. Because what is a man according to the Bible? Give me that in first Maccabees 2. Let's talk about the real soldiers of the Bible that defended their nation against the real enemy. I'm going to show you that. What you're seeing here, toy soldier. You understand? Amateur hour. Read that in first Maccabees 2. First Maccabees 2 verse 54. I'm going to show you the definition of a man according to the most like God, the God of our forefathers. We what you got. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 64. You know what? Start at verse 50. Start at verse 50. Watch this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 50. Really? Now, therefore, my sons, 
Be zealous for the law. He says, have zeal for the laws of God. Be zealous for the law. Not this demonic stuff that they are these, these toy soldiers doing. He says, be zealous for the law, come on. And give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. And give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Read. Right? Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Mm -hmm. So shall you receive great honor and an everlasting name. So he, he says we must call the, our to remembrance the acts our fathers did in their time. What did they do? They delivered the people from oppression. Not from their own, but from the other nations. And when I'm saying the other nation, I'm not talking from, I'm not talking about your brother from Zim, your brother from Mozambique. No, that's your brother, that's your neighbor. I'm talking about the white men that colonized us, that took our land and our resources and stole the whole a whole continent, stole the whole people and stole their resources upon the land and make the people work for their own resources and give him the spoil. Who's confronting him? This toy soldier will not do it. He's not gonna do it. Now read verse 64. Come on. First book of Maccabees, is chapter 2, verse 64. Come on. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. You see what it means to be a man? To be a man, he says, you must stand up for the laws of the, the laws, the laws of God. That's what it means to be a man. You deliver your people from oppression. This toy soldier that he's not delivering the people from oppression. In fact, he's oppressing his own people. Look at this guy, a grown man following a toy soldier. You can't make this up. You cannot make this stuff up. Read verse 64 again. Come on. First book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 64. Read. Wherefore, ye, my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. Come on. For by it shall you obtain glory. For by us keeping the laws of God, we're going to rule the nations on earth. That's what the most High God is promising us. So this toy soldier, he don't know what it means to be a man. That's why the people are following him. No beard. Because a beard shows you what a beard is a badge of manly dignity. That's what I'm saying. These so-called leaders, none of them, they teach the people to change. They don't. They don't require the people to change because our people hate law and order. Understand that. Understand that thing. Now, Go back. No, no, let's play on. Okay. We've seen this happen. Okay. So, this is the next video. Watch this. Now, this goes into, they say they are, or they are confronting foreigners, right? I'm going to show you something. Watch this. I know that for a lot of South Africans, this is uh, really something that is unfair, especially for those who are registered and have the right to be in this country. How are things going where you are? Yeah, uh, hundreds of members from Operation Tutula, Soweto Born movement, is basically already in Hillbrow. You'd understand the notoriety that's associated with Hillbrow. A lot of drug lords, we are told, are here. Um, a lot of hijacked buildings, and the majority that stay here are foreign nationals. But of course, you'd understand those economic dynamics that have now um, increased the tensions between South Africans as well as these um, foreign nationals. This people that you see on the ground here say they're here to even clean up, um, we understand, Bill Brown's spot. In fact, I want to read a tweet that I just saw now from Mkanta Lags, basically saying that we're on our way to Hillbrow, we have nothing to lose but our city to regain, ready for any eventuality uh, to do that side loading. In fact, I've got Mkanta Lags here, just to maybe outline what, what, what are you here for. Mkanta, thank you for joining us, but what's the mission here today? The mission here is to remind South Africans that we are not going to have borders in our own countries that are, that are made by illegal foreigners, because there's a thing now. South Africans can't just walk freely in Sunnyside. South Africans can't just walk freely in Hillbro. Now we are here as South Africans to walk our streets. These are our streets. They don't belong to anyone. They don't even belong to government because government is the people and the people are here. Number one. Number two, we are here to ensure that the same bylaws that we are expected to enforce in Soweto and every other place in South Africa are, are enforced in, in dominated areas of illegal foreigners. I want to talk about the legality of it all because in speaking to the police, yeah. they say that you are not allowed to go into any specific building if you don't have a warrant. It seems like you don't have a warrant yeah. yet. So what are you going to do exactly? 
This is what's funny. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. But let me tell you what's funny coming from uh, our South African police. South Africans don't have a warrant to enter buildings. But the illegal foreigners enter the buildings without a warrant. You see, you must think twice about this law. <laughs> Give me Proverbs 7 verse 7 again. Because he mentioned a couple of things. He mentioned that, um, that we're not going to have borders in our own country. What about the real borders that exist on the continent? What about those borders? Because who created the real borders on the continent? He will never talk about that because he's not going to confront that real alien. Read that Proverbs 7 verse 7 again. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 7. Go ahead. And beheld among the simple ones and discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. That's what you are seeing here. Young man void of understanding. You understand? We must start thinking about this constitution. So what's going to happen here? Given what, that what, there's what a lot of police happen? already on Let the ground, you. they're saying they're not going to allow you. Yeah. Already we've seen tensions fuel up yeah. between yourselves and the police already. Yes. When there were earlier gunshots yes. that we heard here, yes. how are you going to keep it safe? Let me tell you something. My people here are very disciplined. High discipline, serious here that you are going to see. <laughs> Man, are you brothers seeing this? Amateur hour. Do you, brother, do you see this? Sir. Oh, please, sir. I, I want you to see, listen to the next part. Listen up. <laughs> when the command comes out that if someone wants the toilet, one of our ladies wants the toilet, they will go into a building and access the toilet. We are not going to be told that in South Africa you need a warrant to access a building when other people don't. Yeah, and when that, when that time comes, you will see at the end of the day what happens let that moment come i don't want tomorrow they must say i was inciting violence i said one two three while the the, 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 the cops are here protecting illegal foreigners who have entered and locked themselves in our south african owned buildings given the notoriety of hill brow in itself yeah. and what the crime that we hear is here yeah Aren't you endangering the lives of the people that are here, that you've come with here, yeah. bringing them here yeah. in a place that you know is riddled with yeah. the allegations of crime? Everyone that's here, from a young person, ladies uh, and, and men, old people, our grannies and our, and our grandpas that are here now that you are seeing, they are here understanding the security uh, issues that come with being here. And no one asked them to come here. You see that Everyone thing? who's here has volunteered to come here. Do you see that? Huh. Do you see that? Let me show you what this is. Give me the book of John 10. I'm going to show you something. I told you, when there's no vision, the people perish. Guess what? Surah, this is Surah's back in the day. Watch this. Give me John 10. Okay? Give me John chapter 10. Now, read verse 11. Watch this. John 10 verse 11. The book of John chapter 10 verse 11. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You see that thing? The good shepherd is that the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. That's the good shepherd. Meaning the good shepherd will protect the sheep. Make sense? Yes, sir. Now what's yes, the next verse? Go ahead. But he that is in highly. But he that is in highly. He that is in highly. A highly is people is, is a person that only works for money. They only work for a reward that only will benefit him. Watch this. Go ahead. And not the shepherd. This is this toy soldier. He's not the shepherd. Okay, come on. Whose own sheep are not. Whose own sheep are not. He don't give a damn about the people. He says the people came here voluntarily. They came here understood, understanding the risk that goes with coming here. You understand? They came here voluntarily. I didn't bring them. I didn't call them to come here. Keep going. See the wolf coming. They see, they're going to see, see problems coming. They see the wolf coming. What, what, does, what will a hireling do? Read. And leave it the sheep and flee it. And do what? <laughs> and leave it the sheep and flee it. You see what a hireling do? Hireling, they see problems come. They leave the sheep and they run. You see that thing? They just asked him a direct question. And that's what he said. Keep going. And the wolf catches them and scattered the sheep. You see that thing? And the wolf catches them, catches, catches them, and scattered the sheep. Isn't that what happened in Exodus chapter 5 and 36? 
When problem came, what happened to the people, the 400 men that followed him? Is that some were killed, some, were, some fled, and the, the movement came to naught. It came to nothing. Go ahead. The hireling fears because he's an hireling and careth not for the sheep. You see what the Bible is? This is Jesus the Christ speaking, the black Messiah. He says, the hireling fleeth, meaning he's going to run, because he's an hireling and careth not for the sheep. Keep going, read. I am the good shepherd, mm. and know my sheep. Go ahead. And know of mine. You see what he says? He says, I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and I'm known of mine. Keep going. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. Read. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I do what now? And I lay down my life for the sheep. Let me show you this, the, the mindset of an hireling. Let's go back a little bit. That are here now that you are sick of trying. Everyone that's here, from a young person, ladies, and guess people, what? Our credits are now. As a toy soldier, when we go to war, do sisters go with us? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Do we take the sisters with? <laughs> hmm? We don't take the sisters to war. We don't take the children to war. What the hell are we talking about, man? Fucked out. Yes, sir. Listen, man. We listen. Man, hold it. Give me that matter be. Oh my god, man. Ah boy. Toy soldiers, yeah. Give me that in first Maccabee 13 verse 1. This is our forefather Simon during the time of the Greeks. Listen to what he says. Okay? Read it. First book of Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 1. Now when Simon Read. heard that Chiphon had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and destroy it. So now when he realized that Chiphon wanted to come and destroy the land of Judea, right? What did our forefather Simon do? Go ahead. And saw so that the people was in great trembling and fear. The people was afraid because of Tryphon. Go ahead. He went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together. He gathered the people together. Watch, watch this. Go ahead. And gave them exhortation, saying, Ye yourselves know what great things I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the laws and the sanctuary the battles also, and troubles which we have seen. You see that thing? He, they, because his brethren, remember, Judas is gone at this point. You understand? That the Maccabees, are, they are being, they are, they are being put to death also. So Simon is the one that's left. So he says, you see, now he's exhorting the people. Then they say, you've seen yourself. You yourself also know great things I and my brethren and my father's house have done. Marathias, our forefather, is, is gone also. Okay, go ahead. By reason of all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake. You see that thing? It says, all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake. Because they stood up for the nation. Go ahead. And I am left alone. He says, he is left alone. Watch this. Go ahead. Now therefore, be it far from me that I should spare my own life in any time of trouble. Read. Right? For I am no better than my brethren. You see what thing? You see what he says? Because I'm not better than my brethren, meaning we're going to war. The mission is a go. Come on. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation. You see, you see what he's saying? He says, without a doubt, I will avenge my nation. Come on. And the sanctuary and our wives and our uh -huh. children. Uh, you see that? He says, I will avenge my nation, the sanctuary and our wives, meaning our, he's talking to the men. We're going to defend our wives, our children. Because the children are not going to be in the midst of a battle when we go to war. The women will not be in the midst of a battle when we go to war. The grandmothers will not be there. Go ahead. For all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. You see that thing right there? So, listen. When you, listen, listen, man. Listen. This is a highly... Go back to where was that in John 10. You understand? John 10 verse 11. Then you're going to jump down to verse 14. Read that thing for me again. The book of John chapter 10 verse 11. Read. I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Don't you see that thing? The good shepherd will give his life for the sheep. But a hireling will say, no, these people are here on their own accord. They are on here. They are basically, they are here at their own risk. You, you understand that? Yes, Jump sir. down to verse 14. Come on. The book of John chapter 10 verse 14. Read. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Read. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. Come on. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Now let's get it from the mind of a highly. Our grandpas that are here now that you are seeing. They are here understanding the security uh, issues that come with being here. And no one asked them to come here. Everyone who's here has volunteered to come here. Because unlike many South Africans who rely on Twitter and live on their couches, we still do have South Africans that are willing to live and die for their country. And the people that are here are really prepared so, for the So, so, so the kids, like the young, the daughters that are here, the young sons that are here, the grannies that are here, they are willing to do that. I mean, brothers, let's just think here. Do you, are you seeing this? Uh, so, Madness. This is Madness. crazy. This is crazy. I'm telling this is crazy. This guy, right? This is a toy soldier. He's no leader of the people. Mm. You understand? He's no leader. He's no leader of the people. Understand that. We are prepared for it. If people uh, come to us with love, we'll give them love. If they come to us armed, we'll give them arms. No problem. You see that thing? Okay, what a quick emotion. Like that He's oh. just running on emotion. You understand? No tech whatsoever. On this side. I heard you had a hilted uh, uh, altercation with the police just earlier on. We heard guns ring off. Where are those guns coming from? The gunshots that we heard. No, we can't confirm that there are guns. I have to uh, communicate with the police to say they must give us a space as a leadership to understand what is happening and make sure that we are marshalling our forces. So we can't just say there's a guns whereas we never see the guns. We are here members of Tutula, they are very disciplined. What we want as Tutula is to claim our South Africa pet is on our street. The problem is that the crime is drugs, there's a mess. And you must know my friend. Once there's no leadership, people will lead them. So that's what we are doing here. We are claiming back our country. You see that thing? I'm gonna show you something about what you just said. Now, he mentioned a couple of things. I'll go back to the video. He mentioned a few things. He mentioned that no, um, now there's there's borders in the in, in South Africa. Listen. The people that created the borders on the continent, they will not, they will, they are not going to confront them because they are afraid. You know why? Not only that, because they know if they have to confront them, where they're gonna go to ask for jobs. Think about it. Because you ever ask yourself, why are they targeting their own people but not the white men? Anybody ever ever ask that? How come they are not going after the real foreigner, the real alien who came here? and took the country by violence. How come they're not going to him? Because they are the ones that are owning the economy. They are the ones that, that, that give people jobs. They are the ones that do it. So they're not going to go there because they don't want to bite the hand that feed them. I want two men to think. You understand? Watch this. Because let's deal with the real foreigners. Give me the book of Lamentations 5 and 1. Because he mentioned the borders and all that. Okay, but He's not going to talk about the real alien that created borders on this continent. We're going to deal with them in the spirit of Christ. Lamentations 5 and 1. Read that for me. The book of Lamentations chapter 5 verse 1. Go ahead. Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Mm -hmm. Consider and behold our reproach. Read. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. What is our inheritance? Our land, our resources. The whole planet Earth, that's our inheritance and the people in it. That's what God promised us. That's what the Lord will deliver unto us if we hold fast unto this book until the end. Read. Our houses to aliens. It says our inheritance were as taken by strangers, our houses to aliens. So the strangers are the aliens, which is the foreigners. 
Not our bro- not my brother from Zimbabwe, not my brother from Ghana and Burundi or Rwanda or Ga- or Gabon. No. He's not that's not the for that's not the real foreign. Okay, go ahead. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Now we are orphans and fatherless because what they were killing our fathers and mothers. They were killing our children. You understand when they arrived here in 1652, in 1820. Read. We have drunk in our water for money. Now we are paying for water, which is a natural resource, because they are selling water to us. Read. Our wood is sold unto us. No, notice what is Jeremiah is saying. He says, we have drunk in our water for money. Because this water is ours, but now we are paying for our own water. Not only that, he says, our wood is sold unto us. Because wood to make, to make what? Wood they use to build houses and all that. But wood goes into fire, which goes into electricity, all of which are natural resources. The white man didn't create electricity, neither did he make water. Both of these things, they are natural resources, which is our inheritance, you understand, that God gave to us. Ray. Our necks are under persecution. Ray means slavery. We labor and, and have no rest. We labor and we have no rest because we are slaves, we are in captivity. Go ahead. We have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. You see that thing is that we have given the hand to the Egyptians, meaning the slave masters, and to the Assyrians, another slave master, to be satisfied with bread. The Egyptians and the, the Assyrians, these are slave masters. This is a metaphor for America, Europe, China, the France, you understand? The Dutch, the British, the Portuguese, the Spaniards. All of these nations that I'm mentioning, they are the ones that took our land and our resources and stole everything from us. This this toy soldier, he will not confront the real alien, the real strangers that left our land desolate, that put us on 13% of the land while they occupy 87% of the land. They're not going to confront them. Read. Our fathers have sinned and are Mm -hmm. not. And we have borne their iniquities. He says, our fathers have sinned, meaning broke the commandments, and are not, meaning they are dead, and we are not ruling, and we have borne their iniquities. Now, we are carrying their sin because of what our fathers did. Go ahead. Servants have ruled over us. Stop right there. So, the, the servant is the aliens and the strangers in verse, in verse 2. Read that verse again. The book of Lamentations, chapter 5, is 8. Go ahead. Servants have ruled over us. Mm-hmm. There is none that does deliver us out of their hand. You see what the Bible is saying? Is the servants have ruled over us. Right now, the servants are ruling over us. That's Europe. That's America. That's Britain. That's Germany. That's, that's, um, that's the Dutch. That's the French. That's the Portuguese. They are ruling over us. You understand? Hold that. Give me the VRC 10 verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 6. I'm going to teach you who the real alien is according to the Bible. The most that God has, has it all written in the book. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 6. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 6. Go ahead. Folly is set in great dignity. Mm-hmm. And the rich sit in low place. You see what the Bible is saying? It is folly, meaning the folly, the foolish is set in great dignity. That's the alien, that's the servant that's supposed to be, that's supposed to serve us. It says now they are ruling over us and the rich sit in low place. Who's the rich? We are the rich. We are sitting in a low estate. We are at the bottom. Read. I've seen servants upon horses and Mm. princes walking as servants upon the earth. You see that thing? I have seen servants upon horses. Who's the servant? The white man that sits on horses in the plantations, in the farm, when they were watching over us to make sure that we pick cotton and all that. Because when you sit on a horse, you are in a position of authority. And princes, princes walking as servants upon the earth. Who's the princes? We are the princes. But we are walking as servants upon the earth. We are slaves. You see that thing? So go back. Go back to Lamentations 5. Read verse 8 again. Book of Lamentations chapter 5 is 8. 
Go ahead. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. You see that thing? Nobody's delivering us out of the hands of these servants that we suppose they supposed to serve us. You understand? Go ahead. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Because of the sword of slavery. Because the, who's the sword? His sword, the white man, the so-called white man, he is the sword of the wilderness. You understand? So now, but watch, jump up to verse 2. Read 2 and 8 together. The book of Lamentations of the 5 is 2. Mm -hmm. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Wait. Our houses to aliens. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that does deliver us out of their hand. You see what the servants are? The servants, the aliens, and the strangers is the people that took our land, our resources, you understand, our book. They changed our names. They enslaved us. Now, we re listen, we are saving them now for the want of all things. That's what the Bible is telling us right here. Your, your, the servants, the servants, the strangers, and the aliens is not talking about the brother from the Congo. He's not talking about my brother from Nigeria, my brother from Guinea, Cape Verde, my brother from Jamaica. No, he's talking about the so-called white man that came over here in 16, in the 1600s, the 1400s, which is the Portuguese, they came over here also. You understand? Those are the aliens. Those are the strangers. Those are the foreigners, the real foreigners of this land. Who David Livingstone. Nobody wants to confront them or their grandkids. Nobody wants to touch them because they still have to go back and ask back for a job from them. That's why. You, you understand? But you target your brother who's vulnerable, who's also poor, just like you. Who's suffering the same oppression from the same man that you are afraid to confront. You see that thing? Give me that in Micah chapter 2 verse 1 because let's see what the aliens did. Let's see what the real foreigners did. Not my brother from the Congo. No. Okay. Micah 2 verse 1. I'm going to show you what these aliens did. Watch this. The book of Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Mm -hmm. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. It says, what to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their bed? These people that work, that devise iniquity and work evil upon their bed, they are ruling over us with their power over us. Their power over the whole earth. That's what the Lord is letting you know. Who are these people? Give me Psalms 83 verse 1. Watch this. I'm going to give you the names of the people that work, that devise iniquity, that work evil upon their bed. And they practice it in the morning because they have power over us to do it. Psalms 83 verse 1. Let's get there. Psalms chapter 83 verse 1. Go ahead. Keep not thou silence, O God. Mm -hmm. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. So now King David is praying as a listen. Don't be quiet, O Lord. Hold not thy peace, O Lord. Be not still, O God. Go ahead. Follow. Thine enemies make a tumult. My, thine enemies, they say, God, God, your enemies, they make a tumult. An angry gathering to destroy your people. Go ahead. And they Come that on. hate thee have lifted up the head. As a they that hate thee, the enemies that hate you, they hate you and your people, they've lifted up the head. They've lifted up themselves as God. They've lifted up themselves as Christ. And they've lifted up themselves as the Jews of the Bible, too. That's what they've done. God's enemy. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Mm. And consulted against thy hidden ones. You see what they did? Is that our enemies, they would take crafty counsel against God's people. That's what we read in Micah. When it says, woe unto them that devise iniquity and what? And work evil upon their base. That's the crafty counsel. It says what? They've taken crafty counsel against God's people and consulted against the hidden ones. Because we are the ones that are hidden. The crafty counsel is what? The crafty counsel is them making themselves the, the Jews of the Bible, which they are not. 
They stole our culture, our identity, our history, our book, our land, our resources, and they stole the whole country and continent and the people in it. Operation Dudula, why can't they Dudula the land? How come they're not doing that? How come they're not going to, to send and to deal with the real criminals that are, that are wearing suits and ties and all that? They are running corporations, stealing our gold, our diamonds, our minerals on a daily basis, taking them back to Europe. Because those are the real criminals. So why aren't they, why aren't they attacking them? Why aren't they confronting them? Hmm? You ever think about that? Hypocrisy. Go ahead. They have said, come, let us cut off, let us cut them off from being a nation. Mm. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You see that thing? Let us cut them off from being a nation. Right now, we have been cut off from being a nation because we are divided, we are renamed, we are changed. Guess what? We don't remember who we are. Okay? That's why now you see black on black crime. Because remember when, um, when George Floyd was killed in the U.S.? What was the people here in Zanzi doing? They were saying Black Lives Matter, right? Isn't, what they were, isn't that what they were doing? But guess what? Where is Black Lives Matter now? Where is that? I'm going to play the antagonist. Where is the Black Lives Matter right now? Hmm? Where is it? They were just faking the funk. Read the verse again, verse 4. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 4. Right. Said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Right. For they have consulted together with one consent. Mm -hmm. They are confederate against thee. You see that thing? It says, for because they have consulted together with one consent. That's why in Micah says, they wake evil upon their bed, and when the morning is light, they practice it. They devise iniquity because they have power. They have power over us. That's why they can do that. You understand? It says they consulted together, meaning these God's enemies, they work together. They all agree as one. Meaning what? Esau, the so-called white man, being on top of them all, and all the other nations, they all agree with what the white man tells them to do. They're all working together. They're all in one accord. That's what the Bible is saying. It says, for they have consulted together, together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. He's going to name them now. The nations that work evil upon their base. Read what you got. Now read the six. Come on. The tabernacles of Edom. You see who's the ringleader? The ringleader is Edom. Edom is the biblical name for the so-called white man. I don't care whether he's calling himself a German a Portuguese, a French, a Dutchman, Netherlands, an American, European, they are all Edomites. It says they are the tabernacles of Edom. The white man is the ringleader. Go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. That's the Arabs that are filling our communities now. Go ahead. That's the Arabs, the Ishmaelites. Right? Of Moab. Moab. That's China. That's the Chinese. Go ahead. And the Hagarines. These are Hamites. Read. Right? Kebal. Nilotic Hamites, come on. And Amon. Amon, that's the Japanese, read. And Amalek. And Amalek. Amalek is the so-called, the so-called, the Jewish people in our land today. Jewish people, white people calling themselves Jewish, that were put in our land in 1948 by the British government, following the 1917 Balfour Declaration mandate. Okay, go ahead. The Philistines. Hamites, come on. And the inhabitants of Tyre. Hamites. These nations right here, these nations are confederate against us. They are the ones that are working evil upon their bases, destroyers. And who's in the front? The so-called white man. You understand? They are not going to go through God's hit list. I'm talking about Bull Tantalag, the toy soldier called Tantalag. He is not going to go through this list. Akiri said he's got a list of foreigners. Isn't that what he said? That's what he said, right? Yes, sir. In that video. Are you brothers paying attention? That's yes, what sir. he said, right? In that video. He said, look, yes, we, have a list. we have a list of foreigners, you understand, that we're going to deal with. I want to see him deal with this list right here. Edom, which is the so-called white man, 
Ishmaelites, which is the Arab, Moab, the Chinese, Hagarim, Hamite, Gebal, Hamite, Ammon, Japanese, Amalekites, Jewish people in our land. They must go to Jerusalem and to rule our land. I want to see that. You understand? The Philistines, Hamite, and the inhabitants of Tyre, Hamite. So let's say they say, because well, here's another argument. They're going to say, okay, but we deal with local. No problem. You want to deal with local? Okay. How come? Let, no problem. Go and deal with these banks that is the, the banks that are built with apartheid money. Why can't you do that? Like then? Where did they get the money from to build these banks? Who Standard Bank, who SNB, who APSA? Where did they get them? That apartheid money. Where does it come from? They took that money from our fathers and mothers because we were rich when they arrived. Here. We owned everything. That, that is called old money. Old money is apartheid money. Where did they get it from? They get it from our fathers and mothers that because we had positions here. Why can't they go into do like that if we're going local? Hmm? I'm trying to show you the flaw in this plan. There's a huge flaw. And guess what? Because he's a trade soldier, you don't know what the hell is doing. That's what I'm trying to show you. Okay? Now let's go back to Micah 2. Go back to Micah chapter 2, verse 1 again. The book of Micah chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Read. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. You see that thing? It says when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. So who is the them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their bed? I just gave you a list of them. Their name. God hit list. Okay? Now, watch this. Keep going. Read verse 2. Micah 2 verse 2. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. Hold so on. You know what? Be before you get there, read verse 1 again. Something I want. The book of Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Mm -hmm. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Because it is, it, it is in the what? Because it is in the power of their hand. So now let's go back to the ring leader. Give me second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. It says because it is in the power of their hand. The power that they have, guess what? Is the power to rule all nations on earth. That's why he's number one on God's hit list. The so-called white man. Second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Read what you got. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Read. Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom are made to reign in my world? Read. That the end of their times might come through them. You see what Ezra is saying? He says, Art now dot not, he says, Art not thou it that remains of the four beasts. Because remember, America comes out of what? America comes out of ancient Rome. America is an extension, is the extension of ancient Rome. So that's why it says, are you not the one that remains of the four beasts, which I made to reign in my world, that the end of your time of rulership might come through here? You understand? Because America, this man is going to be destroyed while he's ruling. And that's why you see now Jacob is waking up. That's why you see us waking up now to who we are according to the Bible. Okay, go ahead. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past. Mm -hmm. And the power over the and world. What? And overcame all the beasts that were past. Read. And had power over the world with great fearfulness. Stop right there. And had power over the world with great fearfulness. That's why here we're reading it says, because it is in the power of their hand. The power they have is over the whole earth. Read that part again. And had power to do what? And had power over the world with great fearfulness. Because they rule the whole earth with an iron fist. Understand that. Go ahead. And over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. You see that thing? Over it says, and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. They are destroying the whole earth. And when you look at the, the continent, oh man, they really destroying this continent. 
They are leaving the people impoverished and while they're making themselves rich. Okay, go ahead. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. We agree with deceit because nobody knows that this so-called white man, he is the biblical devil. He, listen, that's why throughout history, he's just blending in with other cultures. He's a culture vulture. He's stealing cultures of other people to blend in that nobody knows that he is the real culprit that the whole earth is in a mess. You understand? But Operation Bidula is not going to go through that with this in Psalm 83. They're not going to touch that. You understand? We just saw the proof of that. Okay? Now, watch this. Go back to Micah now. Micah 2, read verse 2 now. Micah 2, verse 2. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. Go ahead. Then they covered fields and take them by violence. Mm -hmm. And houses and take them away. Read. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. You see what you see how they got access to this land? They coveted it, our land, our field goes into our land, and they took our land by violence and houses. They took our houses too and take them away. So they oppressed a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. They took everything that we own, our most prized possession, including our kids. Jump down to verse four. Because when they took the land, this is what they did next. Read verse 4. Come on. The book of Micah chapter 2 verse 4. Read. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, We be utterly spoiled. Mm. He have changed the portion of my people. So now, you see what he's saying? He says, In that day shall one take up a parable against you. Who took up a parable against us? The so-called white man. He's the one that did it. Now, because he's stealing so much on the continent, he's getting the, the rest of the, the people on the list, on God's hit list, to come and help him steal from us. Now he's brought China in. You see that? Now they brought India in. You see that? That's what's going on. He says, I've stolen enough, but you'll never have enough. But he's already inviting other people that are also going to steal from us. That's why it says, in that day shall one take up a parable against you. You understand? And, and lament with a doleful lamentation. Who's going to lament? We are going to lament. We are going to mourn. Because guess what? They will take everything from us. They will destroy it. We have at, we are, we be utterly spoiled. We are spoiled. They took everything from us. Mentally, spiritually, physically, we are spoiled by this nation. And he has changed the portion of my people. They took our land. Our resources upon the land. They took our children, our books, our identity. They kicked us even out of our homeland in Jerusalem. You understand? How have he removed it from me? How did they remove it? Turning away, when he went back, before he went back, he divided our field. They divided our land. That's the scramble for Africa. That's the Berlin Conference of 1884. That's what Mike is explaining here. When they divided our field, how did they do it? Give me a book 1 verse 6. Read that for me. They don't know no history. That's why they're just running their black mouth. Okay. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1 verse 6. Read. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, mm -hmm. which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Read that verse again. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 6. Read. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. That what? Shall march, that bitter and hasty nation. Is that the Chaldeans is a metaphor for the so-called white man. You understand? The Lord says he's going to raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. Come on. Which shall march to the breadth of the land, to mm. possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. That's how they divided our field. They marched through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places. Because when you see that part when it says dwelling places, because there were people dwelling in the land already. That because that was the dwelling places that are not there. There were people dwelling. Our forefathers dwell in the land. They kicked us out. That's why it says you will march through the breadth of the land. Meaning what? The biggest part of the land, he's going to take them by violence 
and they will divide it up among themselves. Jump down to verse 9. Go ahead. Verse 9. They shall come all for violence. They're going to come for violence, read. Right? Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. They're going to take up everything, read. Right? And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. They're going to enslave the people once they take the land. Understand that. Micah 2, about to chapter 2, verse 8. Chapter 2, verse 8 now. Come on. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. You see that thing? Because you have spoiled many, that, that, he says, spoiled many nations. Habakkuk is saying the same thing that we read in Micah. He says, we be utterly spoiled. How is he, how he, how had he removed it from it? Turning away, he divided our field. He took the breath of the land and possessed the dwelling places that are not there. That's how we were spoiled. Read verse 8 again. Come on. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. You see that thing? Is that the remnant of the people that this white man has spoiled with his European allies, the Lord says they also are going to be spoiled when the Lord is dead. Go ahead. Because of men's blood. You see that thing? Because of men's blood. Because they shed the blood of the people they stole the land and the resources from and enslaved the people. Go ahead. And for the violence of the land. You see that thing? And for the violence of the land. Because when you watch, that doc when you watch the documentary of Enoch and Kijima, when they came, they went to Indarelana in Eastern Cape, and they kicked them out of the land, they, they slaughtered them, they murdered them. They said, listen, we want to run an autonomous uh, community. We don't want the government to interfere. We're not going to interfere in your business. Don't interfere with our, in ours. Guess what? They brought violence to the land and they slaughtered the people. Go ahead. And for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. You see that thing? The violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein. Meaning they want to slaughter the people to get access to the land. Because once you have land, you have wealth. They know that. They understand that. Okay. Now, watch this. Um, let me play this video real quick. Let me play this video. I'm going to come back to this guy. One second. I needed to um, just segue for just for a second. Bear with me. Okay. Talk about Africa. Today we'll talk about Africa, once seen by Europe as the antithesis of civilization, the heart of darkness, in the words of a certain Joseph Conrad. Centuries later, Africa remains ignored. It makes news for its conflicts, poverty, and exoticism. For the longest time, the world saw it as a lost cause. Then one country saw opportunity and thus began a new race for Africa, not very different from the scramble of the 19th century when colonial Britain and France wanted raw materials, slaves, and geopolitical influence. You see that? France and Britain were at the heart of the exploitation during the time of the, uh, during the scramble for Africa. Of the eight of eighteen of the eighteen hundred, minerals, slaves, geopolitical influence. You understand? Now, in the twenty first century, global powers are in more or less the same race: China, the United States, India, the European Union, Japan, Israel, Canada. All of these countries are in the race for Africa, mm. and one country is emerging as the clear winner. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay, and this is Africa a continent of 54 sovereign states, 17% of the world's population, 9.6% of the global oil output, 90% of the world's platinum supply, 90% of the world's cobalt supply, mm. half of the world's gold supply, two thirds of the world's manganese, 35% of the world's uranium, 75% of the world's coltan, and 54 votes in the United Nations General Assembly. This is what makes Africa so attractive and makes the continent a battleground for global powers. There are numerous fronts, investment and infrastructure, military power, diplomacy, soft power, trade, geopolitics. Every country has its own interest in Africa. In 2016, Israel began its scramble for the continent. Benjamin Netanyahu became the first Israeli prime minister so to visit this Africa. Is Amalek. White people that stole our land. 
that were put over there in 1948. You understand? So I just wanted to show you that. I just wanted to, I just wanted you to see um, when it says they came, they took the breath of the land, they took the whole continent. You understand? And guess what? After they divided the continent up and each white man getting his own tree, Britain take Britain getting Zimbabwe, um, South Africa. You understand? Guess what? Each white man had their had their had their piece that they took, and guess what? The piece that they owned had mineral resources underneath, and the people living in that land they were exploited to work in those mines to dig up the gold, the diamonds, the platinum, the uranium, and so forth, and give back to the white man who doesn't own any of it. So guess what? Keeping it local, they are here, Anglo-Platinum. You understand? There's Anglo-Platinum, again, and Anglo-Gold. How come they are not Dudula? How come Dudula, they don't Dudula those mines? How come they're not doing it? Hmm? I'm showing you that this thing has a big hole in the middle. You understand? It's not well thought out because it's run by amateurs. That's the point I'm trying to show you. Okay? So now, Give me, um, go back to Micah 2. Micah chapter 2, read verse 3 now. Watch this. Micah 2 and verse 3. Micah chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. Therefore, thus said the Lord, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil, from which ye shall not remove your necks, mm -hmm. neither shall ye go haughtily. For this time is evil. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, against this family do I do I devise an evil because we broke his commandments, from which ye shall not remove your neck. Because right now we're still under, we're still under their foot. Their foot is still on our neck because we're still under persecution. Neither shall he go haughtily, for this time is evil. Because we're living in an evil time right now, where the nations are doing whatever the hell they want with us. You understand? Watch this. Because they took the land. You understand? They took the land by violence. They divided the land up for themselves. What were they looking for after that? Give me second as a 16 verse 46 real quick. You know what? Hmm. Give me Daniel 11 verse 23. Daniel chapter 11. Before you get there. Daniel chapter 11. Okay. Verse, verse 23. Daniel chapter 11 verse 23. Read that for me. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 23. Read. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, after the league, remember, the, what is the league? The league is the Berlin Conference. The League of Nations. The Berlin Conference was made up of the League of Nations, which later became the United Nations. It says, after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. Meaning what? They divided the land because Otto von Bismarck, he had a, he, the, the, German, the German chancellor, you understand? He said with 13 European nations to decide how they're going to divide Africa up like a piece of cake. And that's, what, that's exactly what they did. After they've done that, he said they're going to work deceitfully. What was the deceit? I'm going to show you what the deceit is. Jump down to verse 27. Read verse 27. It says, after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Because white people, they are not more than us. The only reason why they were able to conquer us is because the Most High God was no longer with us because we broke his law. That's why. That's the only reason. Now read verse 27. Watch this. The book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 27. Read. And both these kings' hearts shall be shall be to do mischief. Uh -huh. And they shall speak lies at one table. That's the legal, that's the Berlin conference. They spoke lies at one table. It says both of these kings, meaning these 13 European nations, shall be to do mischief. Meaning what? They are going to deceive us because it says it's going to work deceitfully and they shall speak lies at one table. What is the lie? I'm going to show you the lie. Go ahead. But it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. The end will be at the time appointed because the end is now where Jacob is waking up 
and their end is that now this, the, the, their, 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 their end is beginning. Their end is already in motion. It started in 1969 when they landed on the moon. But my point is, is that they're gonna what speak lies at one table, but they're gonna gonna prosper. I mean, they're gonna rule, they're not gonna rule us forever. Jump up to verse 24. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 24. Come on. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the province. Stop right there. Are this white man will enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the provinces. Remember what we read in Habakkuk chapter one. It says what? He shall, uh, he shall march through the breadth of the land and possess the dwelling places that are not there. That's what we're reading in Daniel. It says what? He shall enter peaceably. How did he enter peaceably? He came with the Bible, our record, and he came with white Jesus and the cross. The missionary. That's the peaceably. That's the deceit. They came in the name of white Jesus. You understand? That's the peaceably. That's peaceably. That's what it means, peaceably. Okay, come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 24. Read. He shall enter peaceably upon the fattest places of the province. Read. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done. Because what they've done is way beyond what their fathers have done in conquering us and destroying us. Read. Nor his father's fathers. Mm -hmm. He shall scatter among them the prey. The prey is us. Go ahead. And spoil and riches. They're going to spoil our land and take our riches. Read. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. You see that thing? It says he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds. The strongholds, remember, is what? Jerusalem. You understand? Because our city was fortified. It says even for a time. Because this goes, this goes into when the, when, when the Greeks came against us and so forth. But jump down to verse 8. It also goes into now. Because they took our land. They took it by violence. They killed our mothers and fathers. That's what they've done. Daniel is also going into that. Read verse 28 now. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 28. Read. Then shall he return into his land with great riches. You see that thing? So guess what? They're going to they're gonna make a leap. They're going to speak. They're going to speak lies at one table. You understand? They will enter peaceably. Okay? In, uh, among, upon the fairest places of the province. They're going to enter with the Bible upon the fairest places of the province. And once they deceived everyone, once they killed everyone, once they've taken their land, guess what? Here's what they said they will do. They will spoil us. They will take our riches. And where will they go? Read verse 28 again. The book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 28. Read. Then shall he return into his land with great riches. Mm -hmm. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. You see that thing meaning the Bible. His heart is against the holy covenant. He's against his Bible. Then shall he return unto his land with great riches. Where did he get the riches from? The continent. You understand? Go ahead. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. He's going to exploit us for our natural resources. That's why he's sucking the oil out of the earth. That's why you're seeing earthquakes now. Because the oil is the blood of the earth. But he's just destroying it. He just wanna, he wants to go out with a bang. That's what this white man is doing. He's destroying the earth. But I bet you Operation Juguna does not have them on the list. Because guess what? They see what they see God when they look at them. They're gonna go back and beg for jobs, you understand, with this plan that they've got, which is not a plan at all. Watch this. Now give me second Ezra 16 46 because it says, He shall what? He shall return to his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. He shall do exploit and return to his own land. Second Ezra 16 46. Second book of Ezra. Chapter 16, verse 46. Go ahead. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow mm. their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. You see that thing? The strangers is the aliens, which is what? Which is the servants we read in Lamentations 5, verse 2 and 8. These strangers is talk about the so-called white men 
the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs, the Hamites, he's talking about them. The strangers will reap our food, they'll do exploits and spoil the goods. You understand? Overthrow our houses, kick us out of our houses. They're going to take, occupy 87% of the land. We're going to live in Pakistan, which is the country today. And take their children captive because guess what? They enslaved our children. They sold our children overseas. For in captivity, meaning in slavery, apart a forced migration, colonization, and famine, poverty, we're going to get our children. That's what you see right now. Go ahead. Verse 47. No, 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 no. Deuteronomy 28, verse 33. Let me go there real quick. Okay, let's deal with the fruit of our land that they will exploit. Read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 33. Go ahead. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You see that thing? That's why it says, strangers shall reap your fruit. That's the same thing that Ezra just said. The fruit of our land, the gold, the platinum, the diamond, the uranium, the, 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 uh, the cobalt, the coltane, you understand? It says in all our labors, because who's going to be working in the mines? Who's going to be working in this diamond and platinum mine? Our people. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You understand? Jump down to verse 49. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Read. Right. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Mm -hmm. The end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You see that thing? Because the Lord sent a nation against us who has the symbol of the eagle, which is what? Spain, France, Germany, Italy, America, Britain. You understand? They all have the symbol of the eagle. Okay, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Go ahead. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. They're not going to care about the young or the old, right? And he shall eat of the fruit of the cattle. Not only the... will he eat the fruit of the land, but he's going to eat the fruit of the cattle as well. Go ahead. And of the fruit of thy land. You see that thing, the fruit of our land. The mineral resources. Go ahead. Until thou be destroyed. Read. Right. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. You see that thing? So it says, not only is he going to take the fruit of the, the cattle and the fruit of your land. No, no, no. It says he's going to go beyond that. Which also, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, that's our cattle, the flocks of our sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Remember, there was a there was a brother that we were speaking with when we were in Sharpdeal, and he was explaining to us that in the 80s, his family they owned 250 cows. Just the cows, and he says the land was huge that they owned. And he said that the, the apartheid government gave them a command. It was a government command to say, black people, listen, you are not allowed to own so many cows. We're going we're gonna to take 250 cows from you and we're going to believe you with 10 cows. The rest, we're going to auction them and we decide the price how much these cows are going to be sold for. That's what he was telling us. That's what we're reading here. You understand? And obviously, they have, they have access to our land. They own it now, 87% of it. Guess what? Now, there's mineral resources there. And the, he was saying that they now made sure that now our forefathers work in the mine. While you're working in the mine, who's, who, who's looking after the land? Nobody. I didn't you survive using your livestock. Your livestock is your wealth. They took the wealth from you, which is your livestock. Now, you have no wealth. Now you are forced to go and work in the mine. Who's looking after your farm? Nobody. Guess who takes it? The white man takes it. That's what they were doing. How come this toy soldier is not beguiling there? You can't make this up. You cannot make this stuff up. Okay? Now watch this. Give me, um, give me first Maccabees 1 verse 11. I'm skipping a couple of things here. Okay? I'll address it the next time, Lord's Lord. 
Give me first Maccabees 1 verse 11. Because the reason why I'm, I went over this is to show you the real foreigner, the real alien, what they've done to us. Everything that I just went over, my, our brothers from Nigeria didn't do this to us. Our brothers from the Congo didn't do this to us. The people that did this to us, they took everything from us, is not our brothers from Gabon or Rwanda. No, it's the so-called white man and his European allies. How come this Bukula operation don't deal with that? Even locally, because they've got mine, they've got businesses. How come they're not Bukuli in there? Hmm? The devil is a liar. Give me that in first Maccabees 1 verse 11. I'm going to show you why they are doing that. They are not confronting the real culprit. I'll show you why they are not doing it. Because in the past, that's what they've done. We've seen this before. This has happened before in the past. I'm going to show you that. First Maccabees 1 verse 11. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 11. You know what? Start of verse 10. Start of verse 10. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 10. Go ahead. And there came out of them a wicked root. Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been an hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the, in the 130 and 7th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. So this is during the time Antiochus was ruling it. This is Antiochus the fourth. He was the king of the Greeks at this time, right? Watch this. Go ahead. In those days when they are in of those Israel, days, in the days of Antiochus' rulership, who rose up? Watch this. Come on. In those days went out there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. That are around about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. You see what he's saying? In those days of Antiochus' rulership, it says, came out of Israel wicked men. That's what you are seeing here with this toy soldier in Kantalag. He is what? He's, he's one of those wicked Israelites who persuaded many of our people that are vulnerable, don't know anything, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are around about us. Because remember, they are pushing, they say, no, so-called foreigners are taking jobs, right? So if the so-called foreigners go back to Zimbabwe and you know, all that, so who's going to be, who's offering these jobs? Who's offering them? The white men, of course. You see that thing? So the same thing that happened back then is happening today. Is the saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are around about us. The covenant is we let go of the so called foreigners, which is really our brothers from the Congo, from Nigeria, and so forth. When we do that, then you hire us. You see that thing? Keep going. It says, for since we departed from them, we have had much soul. Now, they are no longer looking after us. They never did. They never did look after us. They exploited us when they got here, these Europeans. You understand? Go ahead. So this device pleased them well. So this plan pleased them well. That's why now they are popping up everywhere. Okay, go ahead. First book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 13. Then certain Hold on. So, 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 so here you see verse 11, right? I want you to focus on verse 11. The argument, when it says, let us make a covenant with the heathen that are around about us, you know what the covenant is? Jobs. Employment. That's the covenant today. The covenant today is jobs. 2022, the covenant is jobs. That's the covenant. Understand that thing. That's the covenant today is jobs. We're going to make a covenant with the heathen regarding jobs and employment at the expense to destroy our own people to do it. I wanted to show you that. Jump down to verse 13. Come on. First book of Micah, chapter 1, verse 13. Then certain Wait. of the people were so, fo were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. You see that thing? So this whole operation, the heathen is behind it. This whole operation is influenced by a heathen. Because here it says, and certain of the people were so forward they in. That's why they are so chatterer. That's why they are so, they are so uh, 
what's the word desolate right desolate that's why they're so desolate is that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. what is the ordinances of the heathen destroy israel by any means that's the ordinances of the heathen right you understand jump down to verse 15 go ahead First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 15. Read. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant. Now, the, you see that part right there, verse 15? It says, and made themselves uncircumcised. They didn't physically make themselves uncircumcised, but spiritually. Spiritually, they made themselves uncircumcised. Meaning what? We're going to follow after Master and do everything that Master says we must do in order for us to get job and forsook the holy covenant. That's why they are terrorizing their own brothers and sisters, and they were sold to do mischief. And that's the that's what the Bible is showing you. This happened during the time of the Greeks. It happened during the time of Rome. It happened during it happened during the time of the Spanish Inquisition, the Portuguese Inquisition. It's happening now today, 2022. There's nothing new under the sun. Talk about the spirit of man. Okay. Now give me a second, Maccabees 7 verse 24. I'm gonna show you something. It says they were sold to do mischief. Watch this. Second Maccabees 7, verse 24. Because this whole gymnastics of terrorizing their own people, you understand, is so that they can do this. Is that this is the reward right here? Second Maccabees 7, 24. Watch this. Read that. Maccabees chapter 7, verse 24. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech. Whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths mm. that he would make him both a rich and a happy man. You see that thing? That's the problem. That's the reward. They were, we're going to make you a, both a rich and a happy man. I'm going to show you how that translates to today with the regards to job in this operation to do this. Is that if our so our so-called foreigners, because I keep saying that because they are not foreigners on the continent, you crazy. So the so-called foreigners, let's say they go back to the borders that were created and created by the white man, which operation to Dula will not confront. The logic is they go back, then that means that there's no so-called foreigners yet on the con on the on in, in South Africa, right? So that means that the jobs that are available will only be taken by so-called South Africans. That means we're gonna get more, they're gonna get more pay. You understand? They're gonna get to live nice and things like that. He, a heathen is behind this movement. A heathen is pulling things behind this thing. Read that. Okay. Read that verse again. Second Maccabees 7, verse 24. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. Now Antiochus, digging himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, whilst the younger was yet alive, did mm. not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that mm. he would make him both a rich and a happy man. You see the promise? <laughs> it says, but also he assured him with oaths, meaning he made him many promises, and he would make him both a rich and a happy man. When the so-called foreigners are gone, we, you're going to be able to get better job. That's the promise. Go ahead. If he would turn from the laws of his fathers. You see that thing? That's, that's the trade off. The trade is you must, you must turn away, you must turn your back from the laws of your fathers. Part of the laws of your fathers is the royal law, loving your neighbor as yourself. So they are willing to destroy their brother to violate the laws of their father to please master and the reward that he has given you. Keep going, because the Bible says so. Read. And that also he will take him for his friend. You see and that thing? He mm. says that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. I'm going to trust you with, with my business. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to make sure that you're the one that's responsible for hiring your brothers and sisters. The white men don't do nothing for free. That's what be, our people are full men. The Bible is letting you know it says, and that he also he would and trust him with affairs. 
Isn't that that's what they did during the time when Christ walked there? When they said, give me that in John 19 real quick. I'm going to show you that. John 19. Because this is what our forefathers said during the time of Rome. When they were crucifying Christ. Uh, John chapter 19. Um, John 19. Read verse, read verse 12. John 19 verse 12. Watch this. The book of John chapter 19 verse 12. Go ahead. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If you let, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. You see that thing? So the Jews, they said, Listen, don't let Christ go. You understand? He must be crucified because if you let him go, you are not Caesar's friend because they were Caesar's friends. But what was their friendship based on? Their friendship was based on them destroying their own people. Hence why they had a friendship with Caesar. That's why. Go ahead. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. You see that thing? Because they are said, they are, you know, you're not Caesar's friend. You speak against Caesar, guess what? You make yourself a king, you're speaking against Caesar. So what's happening right now is that, guess what? That friendship that we're reading about here in 2nd Maccabees is the same friendship that you are and Pharisees, our people today, there's a behind this movement. I'm telling you, because the Bible is a true book. And guess what? The things that we're seeing here, they are surely repeating themselves. And over time, you're really going to see a hidden fallout. I'm telling you, you understand? You're going to see that. That's the reward that they got for destroying their own brothers and sisters. Understand that? Now, watch this. So, but guess what? Obviously, these people that are doing, they are not the ones that are Certainly not enough, these toy soldiers and the like, the jobs want to come from. Because we're reading here that when you're on, they are coming from who? The heathen, which was the Greek. Today, the heathen, they are called European, they are called Americans and so forth. Those are the heathen. Okay, read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. You see what the Bible is saying? The, the most High God says, because you don't want to keep my laws, you're going to save your enemies. With the which I'm gonna send against you, and you're gonna save your enemies in because right now our people they are, they are hungry, right? They are hungry. It says, and in thirst, you want food, you're gonna go to them. You want water, you go to them. You want clothes, you're gonna go to them. And in want of all things, anything you like, you need, you understand, economy or religion, you go to them, and your enemies will put yokes of iron upon their neck until you have destroyed them. So, guess what? Our people. They are willing to destroy their own brothers so that Esau can be their father and provide for them for want of all things. Because that's the league. That's the covenant they make with the Hebrews that is supporting them behind this cooperation. Understand that. Give me that in Revelation 12, verse 14. Revelation 12, verse 14. It's important to know history because history always repeats itself. What happened back then? Guess what? The Moses is telling us that we're gonna be we're gonna serve our enemies for one of all things. You understand the basic needs in life. Because guess what? When the so-called our brothers, our the so-called foreigners, our brothers, they say they go back. I'm gonna repeat this again because I want this thing to sink in. When they go back, they that's the covenant they make with the heathens that are supporting them. Once they are so-called gone, which that will never happen, it will come to naught. Guess what? The idea is now we're going to get better jobs because they are not here. You see the point? But who's providing these jobs? Because the toy soldier is not going to feed these people. He's telling you that he's a hireling. So clearly, that's a clear sign. He's not going to take care of the people. That's obvious. Okay? Now read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 14. Come on. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that uh -huh. she could fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time 
and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So the woman here is Isa. Isa was given two wings of a great eagle to fly into the wilderness. That's 70 AD. Into her place. That's America first and foremost and the rest of the continent and the rest of the world. Where she is nourished for a time and time and half a time. Meaning 350 years from the face of the serpent. So guess what? This man will be given an extra 350 years to rule until Israel wakes up. So what we're reading here says, until such time, this man will be nourishing us. We read it in Deuteronomy 28 verse 48. God says, our enemies will feed us. Our enemies will take care of us. Here, John the Revelator is saying, from the face of the serpent. You see what John the Revelator is calling him? Moses says enemies, John the Revelator says serpent. He's making reference to the same thing. Who will be taking care of us in terms of one of all things when we want a job? Where would we go? The so-called white man and the rest of the people that support him. So that's the serpent here. He's talking about the white man. You understand? Meaning the devil. Jump up to verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. So who's nourishing us? The devil. Who's there? The so-called white man. That's what the Bible is saying. Go ahead. Which deceived the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. The angels go into his European allies. They're also going to be destroyed when the Lord returns. But what I'm showing you is what Moses said in Deuteronomy 28 verse 48 is the same thing that John the Revelator is saying here in Revelation 12 um, verse 14. That we are going to be nourished from the face of the serpent. But it's time for Israel to wake up. As we are waking up, we want to, we want to be self-sufficient to take care of ourselves. Because the Most High God gave us the greatest book on the earth. Now we're going to take care of ourselves with this book. Understand that thing, brothers and sisters. Understand that thing. Because what you're seeing with this Operation Tudula, the plan is the white man is going, to, is going to feed them. You understand? Their father, the devil, and Satan, the serpent, that's who they are trusting upon to feed them. That's not the plan of a leader. The plan of a leader is to find how we're going to survive as a nation. Should we stop? Should this man stop saying, we're not going to feed you, we're not going to do that. What you going to do? You men see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the mindset you all have to have. You understand that? That's the mindset you all, all have to have. You understand? We must be self-sufficient because the Lord has given us the greatest knowledge on earth. Our forefathers, they saved up, they put food out, they put food at the food pantry because of the famine that's coming. So don't forget that. We must deal with this this week, by the way. Now, um, the reason why you see they are pushing so hard with this operation to do that is because of the covenant they've made with the heathen that are around about them. You men understand this now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Go back to first Maccabees one. First Maccabees one, so we don't forget the thought. First Maccabees one, okay. First Maccabees chapter one. Um, read verse, read verse eleven again. First book of Maccabees chapter one, verse eleven. Wait. In those days, when they out of Israel, wicked men who persuaded many, saying, "Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen." That are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. You see that thing? So the covenant they made with the heathen is what we read in 2 Maccabees 7, verse 24. We destroy our own people, and you promising that you're gonna take care of us. That's the covenant. It happened back then. Guess what? We seeing it unfold right before our eyes this day. But guess what? The most high will bring that thing to naught. And when the Lord does it, here's what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm almost done. Second Ezra 15, verse 70. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 70. 70. Read that. Second book of Ezra chapter 16, 
verse 70. Go ahead. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So there's going to be a great insurrection, meaning what? Persecution of the church upon those that keep commandments. You understand? So what about those that don't? It's going to be worse for them. Go ahead. They shall be like madmen. Mm. Sparing none. Really? But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. You see that thing? They are going to what? He says they are not going to spare. They are going to spoil and destroy those that fear the Lord. Those of us that keep the commandments, this is what's going to happen to us. Go ahead. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. You see that thing? Even those that don't fear the Lord, guess what they are doing? What this operation to do? Go ahead. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. You see, on that day, you're going to know who's for this truth on that day. You're going to know who's rooted in this truth on that day. It hasn't happened yet, but on this day, you're going to see that thing. Go ahead. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. You see that thing? They shall be tried as the gold in the fire. But watch what the Lord says. Go ahead. Hear, O ye my beloved, said the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. Mm -hmm. But I will deliver you from the same. You see what he's saying? He says, the day of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Go ahead. Be not afraid. Neither. Be not afraid. Neither doubt. For God is your guide. You see that thing? The most that God will guide us, the most that God will be with us. But watch this. What about those that don't keep the commandments? Watch what's going to happen. Here's what the most has said he's going to do. He's got something for them. Because our people, they... They, 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 are, they are just caught up in their emotions. They have no idea what's going on. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 24. Watch this. Second book of Ezra chapter 15 verse 24. Come on. Woe to them that sin. Mm. And keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Go ahead. I will not spare them. You see what the Bible is saying? Listen to what the most that God is saying. He says, those that sin against him and keep not his commandments, he says, I'm not going to spare them. Read. Go your way, ye children, from mm. the power. Come on. Foul not my sanctuary. Meaning what? They are not going to enter into the kingdom. They're not going to rule the earth. They're going to be put to death. And they're going to be die. They're going to be woken up. They're going to die again forever and be in pain forever. Read. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. Read. And therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. If they don't repent, they are going to be delivered unto death and destruction by the Lord. Nuclear war. They're going to be, they're going to kiss the missile. They're going to hug the nuclear warhead. Read. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. And you shall remain in them. Mm -hmm. God shall not deliver you. You see that thing? Oh. Hold on. It says... For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. What are the plagues? The coronavirus. You understand? Nuclear war that's going to break out. The famine that's already started. It says, these plagues are going to come upon the whole earth. And he shall remain in the plagues. Those that don't keep the laws. For God shall not deliver you. Because you have sinned against him. You see that thing? So guess what? We need to keep these laws. So we can be delivered from death. You men and women understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All praises to the Lord. All praises to yes, the Lord. I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, 
shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. All praises to the Lord.